Hi, right, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to go over a laboratory project and this one's called putting 3D in perspective. And this is part of the vectors and equations of uh, planes chapter of my calculus book. Anyways, let's just scroll down. And uh, note as always, if you don't have time to watch this whole video, you could, uh, well, there's no summary conclusion this time, but you could play this video at a faster speed and top secret life hack, your brain gets used to faster speed. And here's a link, link to a tutorial on this. Yeah, that I made and you can also uh, download and read the notes or read the notes on the Hive blockchain and the uh, links to these will be in the description below and you, you could also watch a video in parts and the timestamps of all parts uh, all the key parts are in the description as well as well as I'll be uploading video sections playlist of this it's basically I, I uh, take clips from this long video and then put it all, all into uh, a playlist with shorter clips and so on. And again, the links will be in the description below. Uh, let's uh, get, continue further. So calculus book reference. So note that I mainly follow along the following calculus book. And this one is called Cal Calculus Early Transcendental 7th Edition by James Stewart. And note in the earlier videos, I used the 6th edition. Where I continue further. So sections in calculus book chapter. So I have made a list of the sections in this particular chapter with links to the hive post of the videos I've already finished. Note that I've started splitting each long video into sections and made a playlist for each. And uh, basically, this was the chapter vectors in the geometry of space. And uh, links. Uh, this is linked to the playlist. And here's a link to the Hive notes, uh, which includes the video and so on. And this, uh, this is the first section of it, uh, 3D coordinate systems and so on. And the current one we're on now is part of the equations of lines and planes. And this is a laboratory project putting 3D in perspective. This is the current video. There's a link to the, uh, the notes once I uh, publish the video. And there is the playlist link. And again, I'll populate this as I, uh, as I, yeah, as I publish this video and later on and, uh, sort that up. Anyways, let's continue further. So topics to cover. So note that the timestamps, um, will be included in the video description for each topic listed below. So I'll include the timestamps and here is the topics to cover. So laboratory project putting 3D in perspective. And so we'll look at question one. We'll go over the equation of the right clipping plane, the equation of the top clipping plane, and then equation of the uh, left clipping plane, and so on. And then the bottom clipping plane, and then we'll go over a summary of uh, question one. And then question two, look at question three, and then question four. So yeah, there's four questions. And the question four will have uh, several sections. This one's on, on the first section is point of intersection of the line and rectangle. Then we'll go over the point of intersection of the projected line and projected rectangle, and then graphing it all out in GeoGebra 3D graphing calculator. All right, so let's uh, take a look at uh, the laboratory project. So laboratory project putting 3D in perspective. So I'll go over all of this uh, has all the questions, and then we'll go over question one. So computer graphics programmers face the same challenges as the great painters of the past. How to represent a three-dimensional scene as a flat image on a two-dimensional plane, in other words, a screen or a canvas. So to create the illusion of perspective in which closer objects appear larger than those farther away, three-dimensional objects in the computer's memory are projected onto a rectangular screen window from a viewpoint where the eye or camera is located. The viewing volume or the uh, portion of space that will be visible is the region contained in the four planes that pass through the viewpoint and an edge of the screen window. If objects in the scene extend beyond these four planes, they must be truncated before uh, before pixel data are sent to the screen. Uh, these uh, these planes are therefore called clipping planes. So basically, you have a camera like this. And then the clipping planes will be, you'll have four of them here it goes to the image that you're projecting. So this is, let's say this is one, there's two on the side and so on. And then all the, uh, all the stuff that it is be beyond this are going to be clipped out. So you're going to, you're going to cut this out. So for example, if you had a tree in the background here, uh, this will just get uh, cut out and all you're left with is this image in this rectangle. And this gets projected outward here and so on. Yeah, so likewise, the closer the object is, the bigger the projection. If, if something, let's say there's an object here, let's say there's a fly over here or uh, further back here, this gets projected, but smaller sized over there. And then if you have something like super, uh, just a big ball there, this gets projected 
and the entire screen will be covered in with the ball. So again, it shows you a 3D perspective from the viewpoint of where the location of the camera is. For example, if you're looking there for your eyes there, you're going to see just a, a, a big blob. All right. Now let's look at question one. So we'll read these all and then, then, uh, then we'll go over each one individually. So question one, suppose the screen is represented by a rectangle in the YZ plane. Yeah, with vertices is zero for the x coordinate, and then plus or minus uh, 400 for the y, and then zero for the z, and then the top part is zero, plus or minus 400 and 600, and the camera is placed at 1000, zero, zero. So in other words, if this would be the x coordinate here, so it's a thousand uh, units far from the screen. All right, so a line L in the scene passes through the points uh, uh, 230, negative 285, 102, and then the other point is 860, 105, 264. And we're asked, at what points does the line be clipped by the clipping plane? So you basically have a line across here, and you got to find out where you're cutting these off. So basically somewhere around there and here and so on. So that it, so that it shows up in the image like this as opposed to you're not going to have it beyond that. All right. So then question two states, if the clipped line is projected on the screen window, identify the resulting line segment. As I yeah, just drew that up. Then question three, use parametric equations to plot the edges of the screen window, the clipped line segments, and its projection on the screen window. And then it says, add, then add sight lines connecting the viewpoint to each of the clipped segments to verify that the projection is correct. And then question four states a rectangle of vertices 621, negative 147, 206. And then you have the second point 563, 331, uh, 242. The next point 657, negative 111, 86. And then the next point 599, 67, 122 is added to the scene. So basically you have a rectangle, uh, for example, something like this. And then you got to project that on there. All right. And yeah, so then the line intersects this rectangle and then to make the rectangle appear opaque, a programmer can use hidden line rendering, which removes portions of the object that are behind other objects. Then it states, identify the portion of L that should be removed. So the line intersects the triangle. So let's say you have a rectangle like this. I mean, it intersects the uh, rectangle, not triangle. And then you have a line going through and then it's it, now you got it behind it there. So then you want to project it on here. So you're going to have something like this. And a line going through or uh, pointing downwards in this case. So something like this, and then you're going to have to block this uh, out. Oops. Then you're going to have to block this segment out. So this segment needs to be deleted where it's behind the object and also clipped over there so that you're only getting from here there. Anyways, so that's pretty epic stuff there. So that's all the four questions. Let's see, go back to here. And then, yes, yeah, so identify the portion of LSU remove. All right, so now let's jump into question one. Let's reread it and then go over it step by step. So question one, suppose the screen is represented by a rectangle in the YZ plane with vertices zero, plus or minus 400, zero and zero, plus or minus 400 and 600. And the camera is lo located at 1000, zero, zero. And a line in the scene passes through the points 20, uh, 230, negative 285, 102, and 860, 105, 264. Then states, at what point should L be clipped by the clipping planes? All right, so let's take a look at the solution. So let's first graph out the information we are given using the amazing GeoGebra 3D graphing calculator. So what we could do is uh, if you go click the calculator, there's a link you can play around with it. Uh, you can write uh, type polygon and then put in the four coordinates of the uh, the screen that we're given. So we have zero plus or minus 400 and zero and so on and zero 400 uh, and then plus or minus 400 and 600. So zero 400 and then we'll have uh, zero then zero 400 600 zero negative 400 six, 600 ne then zero negative 400 zero. So that's the screen. It will get something like this. You get a rectangle if you just write polygon in there. So you get the screen and you have uh, also the camera here, the coordinates 1000 zero zero. Then there's the line. You can just plug in both both points and it automatically calculates the vector equation of the line. But I'll do that manually. I just want to show it so we have a better grasp of what this question is asked. If we plug these in, uh, these two points inside this, so line uh, with two points, 20, 30, negative 285, 102, and 860, 105, 264, you're going to get a line in 3D like that. Then if you look at it this way, it looks something like this. And then the idea is, well, we want to know when to, uh, when to uh, clip this out. 
by projecting it on. So it's gonna be clipped somewhere across there or or here, depending on which plane it's going through. So let's just go over to the here's the three D graphing calculator. So there's the lines. So you can hide it. Or you can uh, do that. So anyways, you see it in three D. So it looks like this, and we're gonna have to project a clipping plane and see where we're gonna clip this from. So from where here, to there, and so on. So there's a screen. It's pretty uh, epic. Uh, <laughs> 3D uh, graphing calculator. All right, let's continue further. So in here it is uh, looking at it from this view and so on. But yeah, you're not, and we aren't necessarily going to clip from here. It depends on uh, the 3D uh, image of it. So this one's closer. So it should be clipped somewhere across there and so on as we go through it like that or something like that. Anyways, we'll continue further. So thus we need to determine the points on L which are beyond the projection to the screen. Or uh, actually, a more accurately, yeah, so what it's actually is, is uh, instead of beyond the projection of the screen, because again, it's in 3D, so it's beyond the projected planes from the camera to the edges of the, edges of the screen, because again, we want to create a 3D, uh, yeah, 3D perspective, and hence they need to be clipped out, and this will look better now once we have these planes here, or on um, these, yeah, these uh, clipping planes. So uh, this means we need to determine the four clipping planes, which we can see below. All right, and uh, here, uh, here's just the four clipping planes, which you can create in the GeoGebra, just putting a polygon from the uh, camera to the vertices of the screen. And uh, basically what we have is, I'll put the coordinates here. Instead of drawing it, I was going to draw it out earlier manually, but it's going to uh, take a bit too long, especially when we have a powerful uh, graphing calculator like GeoGebra. All right, so here's the point uh, 1000 zero, zero is at the camera. This vertice is going to be at... Uh, this is at uh, zero, and then four hundred, and then the height is six hundred in the set in the x axis. I mean the z axis. It's gonna be x. It's gonna be a y. It's gonna be a z. And then this point right here is going to be zero four hundred zero, and then this top part is going to be uh, zero negative four hundred, and then six hundred, and then just for completeness, this last one. Is going to be zero, negative four hundred, and zero. And uh, these are the four clipping planes. So basically, we're going to have this one. I'm going to call this a right clipping plane. So the right clipping plane, like that. And then I'll call this then the top clipping plane. Then we're going to have the left. I'll the left C dot P. And then this is going to be yeah left. And the top one, and then there's the C P, and then the, then we have one at the bottom as well, like there. Let's put this here. Bottom. This is for completeness, but uh, obviously the line is going to go through somewhere. Uh, if you saw it in 3D, it's going to go through somewhere like this. It's actually going to go through this top one. I'm going to clip that, clip it from there. Anyway, so that's what we have. So let's continue further. All right, so now that we have this, so next we will need to determine the equations of the line and the clipping plane. So we're going to need the actual equations of all these and that line as, as well. So this line going through, so we need that. And then basically we set them equal and try to find the points where they intersect. And so recall the equations of lines and planes. Here's a screenshot from my yeah, earlier videos, equations, equations of lines and planes. And then I had the equations inside the screenshot or uh, inside the thumbnail, which is pretty epic. So there is R vector equals to of the line equals to the R uh, not vector. So this uh, vector, this uh, for the all the points on the line is equal to the uh, R not vector, the initial point, the point, the, yeah, point on the line plus T times V. So T is just the parameter and V is the parallel vector. So this is parallel to this line. And then you can uh, yeah determine the vector equation of line, and then for uh, uh, yeah for planes you need a normal vector, the perpendicular one, so n, and then the dot product of the difference r minus r naught. So if you if you have a, a point like this, then subtract by this one here. So basically this line right there, or that or this vector, I mean. So that vector, uh, that difference, and then it's going to be a dot product. You'll get in you set it equal to zero. That's the equation of a plane. So we'll get to that. So using the given two points of the line, we can thus determine the vector equation of the line and then the parametric equations of a line or of the line. Yeah, so then uh, we'll get to that. And so, uh, so let's go what we were given. And then basically this is, we have to make it look like exactly this because this is the automatic calculator uh, just calculated the vector equation of a line. So we have the two points like here, 230, negative 285, 102, and 860, 105, 264. 
So let's just uh, do all this. Yes, let's write this down manually for now. So r not, uh, I mean r vector equals to r not plus t v, and we have uh, basically r not was choose a point on the line. So uh, uh, well, it's vector uh, on the lines, uh, basically pointing to it. It's going to be two thirty, and make these um, triangle brackets for vector two thirty negative two eight five, and then this is going to be uh, I think one hundred two. Let's just uh, scroll back what it was. So 230, uh, negative 285, and 102. All right, so 102, like that. And then plus T, and then we need a, uh, now we're going to need a, yeah, we need a parallel vector like that, so v, it's a V, and we can determine that but just by subtracting from this point to this point as a vector. So we can just write that out, so we'll just go as, uh, we'll, we'll subtract, actually what I'll do is write 860, We'll do it all in one go, just to save time. So 860 minus 230 is right here. And this is going to be uh, this different zero. This is going to be three, it's going to be six. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, this point right here. So we're going to take the difference between these as a vector. So 860 minus 230, 105 minus negative uh, 285 is going to be plus, then 264 minus 102. That's yes, fascinating stuff. So the next one is going to be comma, and just do this instead of using a calculator. So 105 minus negative uh, 285 is going to be plus. And then add those up. It's going to be 0. So this is going to be 1. It's going to be 9. It's going to be 3. It's 390. And lastly, the next uh, point is going to be, well, we're going to subtract 102. And then the last point was 264. So two, and then uh, this is a, a zero, six, and then one. One, six, two, like that, and just double check. So 105, two, six, four. Yeah, so we have 105, two, six, four, and then there's the 102, et cetera. All right, yeah, so that's our vector equation of a line, but then we can get the parametric by just taking each individual one, so we'll just add these up. So what we'll have is add the line, is the equations x, the x coordinates are 230 plus t, times 630 is 630. So x is equal to the x coordinates 230 in parametric form, uh, plus, I was right, 630t, like that. And then the y is going to be, I'll just, instead of putting a comma, let's put a y like this, y equals to negative 285, uh, and then plus 390t. 90t, I'll just make some, uh, make it all to the left here. Yeah, I just shifted it over. I'm actually, I'll, I'll put a comma. I like putting comma. My calculus book doesn't do it though. But anyway, so the next one's be z equals to 102 plus 162t. All right. And this is the equation of a line. Like that. Yeah, these are the uh, the vector, I mean, the parametric equations of a line. But you can see this here, 230, negative 285, 102, and then there's 630t. 390, 162, that's the, exactly what this calculator gave here. So 230, negative 285, and then there's 630, 390, 162, instead of, uh, this is lambda instead of t. All right, so uh, now that we have the equation of a line there, the next setup is, well, the equation of the right clipping plane. So the right clipping plane can be determined by first obtaining its normal vector, which can be determined as the cross product of the line that extends from the camera, or from the yeah, the camera to a corner and the vertical line that connect that uh, connects uh, that connects that uh, corner, or a vertical line connecting that corner. And uh, basically, what it means is we want uh, yeah a vector from here to here, and then this vertical line. Uh, use those as the points. So we'll draw it out. Basically, we're going to have to draw a plane, draw a normal vector, and so on. Yeah. So let's say the camera is here. Let's say the camera is at one thousand. 0 and 0, and now it's going to go extended, I'm going to put dash line like that, extends from here, and I will draw a, this is going to be the z axis, this is going to be, just to uh, get our orientation correct, this is going to be the y, and this is going to be the uh, x like that, so this is going to be the x. All right, so now let's draw the clipping plane, I'm going to draw it from here, to the uh, corner, let's make it uh, look nice. So I'm gonna draw it like this to this uh, edge, and then this is gonna go straight down. 
uh, line it up uh, with this. Let's just keep it here so that there's the one point. It's going to be dot, dot, dot all the way there. And there is the clipping plane of the, the right one. And this is going to be, and then let's just draw this for completeness. It's going to look something like this. And this is going to be dot, dot, dot. Extend it over there. All right, so these are the uh, points. I'm going to write this one as this is the 0, 400. 600 and then we want to get a the equation of a plane. So let's uh, what we'll you do is well I'm going to erase this and And let's say our our r naught vector is going to be just pointing to this So this is going to be our r naught vector or actually I'll draw that in red. So this is the r naught like that R naught all right, so that's the r naught and then the r vector is just any uh, just any point let's call this r uh, this, and it's going to be x, y, z, any, any point on the plane, so it's a vector from there uh, on the plane. So just put it somewhere in this, in 3D space like that. And then the next setup is, and now what I'll uh, do is actually I'll keep this in, uh, write this in blue actually now. Let's change the color into blue. Let's say dark blue. All right, so we have that. And then the next setup is, well, we're going to need uh, a normal vector. So, and I'll draw this normal vector like this. It's going to be n. It's going to be normal vector to the plane, which is the same as normal vector to these two lines, because they're on the plane. And now we can determine that normal vector by this uh, line going across here. This is going to be our, our, I'll call this r1. And then we have a vector going from the vertical one down. It's going to be r2 like that. So, and basically the, the uh, cross product of those two will get this uh, normal vector like then we can determine these, uh, this R1 and R2 just by the difference uh, when we subtract. I'll put this here. Let's go back to black. So then just put it like that. And this is this point. And basically when we subtract the two vectors or the, the two points, and then we'll get a difference vector. This is going to be 0, 400, and 0. Like that, the point. So let's, let's determine R1. So R1 is going to be, well, this is just a difference, and it's a vector. So the difference, and we'll start from this point right here to this point. So it's just a difference, 0 minus 1,000, like that. It's just indicated by the uh, direction there. Yes, yeah, so 0 minus 1,000. And then the next one is the y-coordinates, 400 minus 0, and then 0 minus 0 minus 0. So this just equals 2, so this part right here. So we're just subtracting each of these, so we get this uh, R1 vector. So this equals 2, negative 1,000, and then 400, then 0. And uh, now, uh, since this is pretty uh, a large right here, there's a bunch of zeros, we can just get rid of those, and all we care about is the is just a parallel vector to it. We don't want the exact, doesn't matter what the exact one is when we take the uh, cross product. So what we'll do is factor out a negative 200. So negative 200. It's going to be out of there. It's going to be now negative uh, 1,000 divided by, I mean, yeah, negative 1,000 divided by negative 200. That's just going to be positive 5. Then 400 uh, divided by negative 200, that's just negative 2. Zero, like that. So what we'll do is, well, we'll choose, I'm just going to choose the vector as, choose the R1 vector to be equal to, just to get rid of the negative uh, two, uh, 200, uh, 5, negative 2, and 0. It's going to choose this, and that's it. Yeah, because, uh, again, all that matters is the direction. We don't care about the magnitude of it. The cross product will just will be the same anyways. All right, so we have that. I'm just going to move this down. All right, now the next one is the R2 uh, vectors. It's the vertical one, so we'll go from this to 0, 4, 400, 0, subtracted by 0, 400, 600. All right, so let's see what we get. And now R2 equals 2. This is going to be 0 minus 0, and then 400 minus 400, and then 0 minus 600. Let's just double check. So yeah, 0 minus 0, 400 minus 400, and then 0 minus 600. So this equals 2, 0, and then 0, the 400 cancels, and then it goes negative 600. And uh, this just means, well, we'll just factor out the negative 600, just get it, just the uh, direction. It's going to be 0, 0, and then, I mean, yeah, and then 1. So, so obviously we're just going to choose, let's put it like this, choose R2 equals to 0, 0, it just simplifies the cross product, like that. 
Yeah, uh, actually, no, the cross product will be different. It'll just be bigger uh, or smaller if you get rid of the uh, scale. It, uh, if you have, if you keep these 600s, it's just going to be longer or, or on the negative side, etc. But all, all that matters is we want the direction that's perpendicular to it. And just so the plane, when we use the, when we find the equation of a plane, uh, basically all the numbers get simplified and just be a parallel plane. Uh, but all the, all the answers will be the exact same because we're just, we're just dealing with direction. We don't really care about the actual magnitude. So anyways, this all makes sense as we go along. So this is going to be, uh, now the n vector is equal to the cross product. So the normal vector cross product of R1 and R2. And let's do this. This equals two. Yes, the cross product of these two, we're going to get this normal vector. And then, then after that, we could throw that into our equation of a plane. So R minus R naught dot product with the n and that equals zero. And so then this equals to remember our cross product this is going to be I uh, j, these are the uh, unit vectors, or the principal vectors or whatever they're called. So i, j, k, and this is going to be now, uh, the first one's going to be 5. Yeah, so it's much easier than dealing with like a 600, 1000, etc. So 5, negative 2, 0, then 0, 0, 1. All right, so we have that. This equals to now, uh, if you recall, so the first one we block out this one, cross it out like that, and then just multiply these two, and then subtract it by these two. So that's the first one. This is going to be negative 2 times by 1 minus 0. Like that, just going to be negative. And then i plus, the next one is going to be, do the same thing, but, but now, now it's a negative. The, the middle one's a negative, remember that. 5 times 1 is 5 minus 0. And then that's going to be uh, j, then plus the next one, block this out, 5 times 0 minus negative 2 times 0, that's just going to be, well, 0 minus 0. This is going to be k. So this equals 2, negative 2i, minus 5j, plus 0k, and we can now factor out the negative. So this equals to negative, uh, and then I also get ready to write this in the uh, triangle brackets format. So negative 2, 5, 0, like this. And then I'm, I'm just going to choose, because uh, it doesn't matter which uh, direction, uh, top or down, as long as it's perpendicular, because uh, we want the equation of a plane. This equals to, oh, I'll just put it down here. So choose negative, yeah, a vector, uh, the n vector equals two, I get rid of that negative, two, five, zero. All right, continuing further. So a note that I chose the simplified vector since all that is important is the direction of the vectors and not, and not the magnitude or sign of it. And uh, you could see that over here. I'm gonna actually erase this and this. And you can see that here in the definition of the plane, for example, uh, in the plane right here, yeah, we just have the vectors like this, r, and this generic, uh, yeah, I mean, this generic r, r value right here, which, which it could be anywhere. It could be anywhere and, and any size. It doesn't, uh, doesn't specify the size. It could even be on the negative side here so that the signs don't matter. And for example, this normal vector, it, it's just a normal vector. It, it could even be on the bottom side and it could be long. It could be small. It does not matter what uh, size it is or which direction because it will still give you the plane. So the dot product will just equal to zero. It doesn't matter what it, uh, what the magnitude is. So hence why we could just use the simplest, uh, simplest version of it. So now we can plug in the normal vector and a point on the plane into the vector equation of a plane to determine the linear equation of the first clipping plane or the right clipping plane of the right. So we have the direction properly. So anyway, so we go uh, n dot and then r minus r naught equals zero like that all right and then basically uh, we'll put the normal vector is going to be two five zero dot dot and then this is going to be uh and then, and then the difference between these two i'm just going to put this all, all simplified it's going to be the x minus the r naught and remember r naught we just picked uh, 1000 zero zero because this is, a, this is a point on the plane. It's actually a point on every clipping plane because it's all uh, intersecting that point. So it's going to be, I'm going to put a minus 1,000. And then y minus 0. 
and then z minus zero like that this equals to zero so the dot dot product if we recall just multiply each of the coordinates together so two times x minus two thousand and then this is going to be yeah so uh, two minuses inside and then now the next one's going to be five minus y minus, minus zero it doesn't change anything so five y and then plus z uh, zero that's going to be zero yeah I'll just put a times z zero equals zero so this this is vanishes zero and then move this over to the other side we get a two x plus five y equals to two thousand so this is the equation of a plane. All right, so uh, now we've got that. So now we need to determine if the line crosses the right clipping plane by plugging in uh, in our parametric equations of a line, of a line into the linear equation of a plane and solving for the parameter t. So that's the linear equation of a plane. This was the vector equation. There's a linear one. And let's plug it in. So let's put our line L, line L for completeness. This, the coordinates, uh, I mean, the parametric equations are two uh, x equals to 230. Plus, or actually, I'll, I'll just copy the whole thing down. Yeah, let's just scroll up here. Yeah, if we just go over here and just save time, I'm just going to copy this. All right, so we copy that, and then go all the way down and just paste it here so we have it for reference, like that. All right, so we have the uh, line, like that. I'm just going to re remove that. So there's our line L, like this. Okay, move it up. All right, so there's our line L, and then we have to plug these inside the equation of a plane. All right, so that's the line L that we'll all write P for plane, and then we're going to have 2, so 2x plus 5y, and then we're going to plug those inside. So 2, and then plug that inside like this. Yeah, just plug this inside. This is going to be 230 plus 630t. And then plus 5y and then uh, yeah put this inside and then there's no z so just ignore that that's going to be negative 285 plus 390 t equals to zero and uh, this equals 2000 uh, yeah 2000 not uh, zero yeah and there's no z values for the plane right here so now we can just do some simplification and solving it Let's multiply this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this. So two times six thirty. That's going to be um, that's going to be uh, twelve sixty t. And then uh, yeah, multiply these ones in after. And then the next one's going to be plus well five times uh, yeah five times three ninety. That's going to be uh, well I'm just going to put a zero for five. Then five times nine is forty five. Carry the four. Five times four. I am mean, 5 times 3 is 15, it's going to be 1950t, and then now we're going to put these together. So 2 uh, times 230 is going to be 460, and then, uh, then minus right here, 5 times 285 times 5. Just do this all by manually, just for fun. So 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2, 5 times 8 is 40, carry then add the 2, so 2. Carry the 4, 5 times 2 is 10, 14, so 14, 25, and then, uh, yeah, this equals to 2,000. So now we're going to have, uh, you yeah, know, take the like terms, and we're going to have some, uh, just some more uh, arithmetic. I'm just going to put a space like this, so 1950 plus 1260, add these up, it's going to be 0, 11, and this is going to be a 1, uh, yeah, carry the 1 to be 11. So 10, 2, and then uh, yeah, that'll be uh, 12 at 1. So 3, 2, 10, t. And then this equals 2. And then this, this one's going to be a big one. 2,000 minus 4. Uh, I'll, yeah, we're going to move this over to the other side, everything to the other side. So we're going to have a minus 460. And uh, that's going to equal 2. Yeah, let's move things uh, down. So 260, 0, minus 0, 0. And this is going to be a 10. Just do, using long uh, uh, subtraction. 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. And then we'll have a 2. 2, 5, 4, 0. Actually, no, this is a... Uh, when we take this 9 out, we have to cross it out and make a 1. So it's going to be a 1. 1, 5, 4, 0. And then we're going to have to... Uh, this one was a plus. A plus. 1, 4, 2, 5. All right, so we have that. And then the next one is going to be... Well, you yeah, know, we just add these up. 
So five, and then four times two is six, and then this is gonna be nine, and this would be two. Two, nine, six, five. So then move the t over, move this over, we get t is equal to two, nine, six, five, over three, two, one, ten. Yeah, three, two, one, zero. That's an interesting uh, number, so three, two, one, and then plug in the calculator, we get 0.9237 for t. All right, and uh, now just a quick calculation check. If you use Wolfram Alpha, just plug that in. So if you go two times 230 plus 630 T, and then plus five times negative 285 plus 390 T equals 2000, uh, exactly what we had over here. So two times 230 plus 630 T, and this over here, just plug that in and solve for T. You can just write solve for T and it'll solve it. And it gives you T equals 593 divided by 642. And then if you plug in the calculator right here, uh, this if you divide this by five, because remember ours was two nine six five, and then just, just factor it out, just factor out five, and get five nine three, and use my built-in calculator. So you can go here, space, and space, and it goes there. And then likely, uh, I mean likewise, if you calculate uh, two nine six five divided by three ten, the built-in calculator in my OneNote is the same as five nine three. Yeah, so it's the same thing. So the calculation check this. So this is correct over here. Yeah, so the, thus plugging our value of the parameter t into the line, we obtain the point where it needs to be clipped on the first clipping plane, or at least where it's projected through, uh, but uh, it's actually clipped from the top plane as we go as we continue in this problem, so it doesn't need to be clipped again from this this line. So for, from the right, let's write this right. Yes, for completeness, put this here. So if you put, plug in the line, so 230 plus 630 uh, times t, let's replace it with 593 divided by 642, just simplified over there, and so we get these points for space. And the next one is going to be 7, 5, etc. Again, built in calculator. And the next one is for the line 2, 5, 1. All right, so plotting all this out in the GeoGebra 3D graphing calculator, we can see where the lines get clipped. All right, so here's here's the uh, that uh, link. It's the same link. So what we have is there's a line. That, so here's another thing that you could do you, you could just type in plane. And then put the poly polygon that we had the, from the vertices 0, for, uh, I mean the, the camera up to 0, 400, 0, and 0, 400, 600. And it automatically solves the equation of a plane 2x plus 5y equals 2,000, which is exactly what we had here. 2x plus 5y equals 2,000. So absolutely remarkable stuff there. You even do the cross product as well. So there's the uh, plane. And if you plug in this point, so point P, 811.92, 8.811.92, etc. is 75.2251. 75.2, uh, three, I round up 24, then 251.64. So it goes right here, and there's the plane crossing it across there. And here, let's go to the GeoGebra calculator. So let's see what we had the clipping plane one. So there's the plane, and there's the, the three points, and then there's the uh, equation. And there's the point P, B, and there's the parameter uh, T is uh, 0.92. So you can just plug that in as, uh, as well. And there it is. So it goes like that. And and I also made the um, right clipping plane segment. I think clipping plane 2. Okay, so we had it like that. Clipping plane 1. Yeah, you can also do the polygon version. So there it is. Yeah, so when you do the polygon, it actually goes above it. So it does not actually need to be clipped because it doesn't go through it. I mean, it, it needs to be clipped actually earlier from the top clipping, uh, clipping plane as, a, as I will show later. So that's pretty amazing stuff. All right, so now we got that part. Let's continue further. Let's make this uh, smaller. All right, so simplify this. This is all giant. But yeah, so GeoGebra is pretty amazing stuff here. All right, so uh, now let's look at the next uh, clipping plane. That's the top clipping plane. So let's follow the same procedure to find the top clipping plane and where the line intersects. So uh, likewise, we'll draw from the, the camera, 1000, 0, 0. And then what we'll do is this goes up like this to the top. It's at uh, 0, 400, and then this is going to be 600. And then we'll go across it like this. All right, and this part here is going to be at the zero, negative 400, and then 600. All right, so we have that, and uh, then let's just draw this in 3D, uh, put this down. 
And this is going to be um, all the way across. We're going to just erase that, add this dashed line for this part. It's going to be the Z. It's going to be the Y just for completeness. It's going to be the X like that. This is the screen like this. All right. And then uh, yeah, the line is going to be across here. So basically, we have this clipping plane. And we want the equation of this line. And again, uh, this one's going to be pretty straightforward. Let's draw a blue one for or a dark blue for uh, uh, this part right here. So basically, we're going to have to have the normal vector. Normal vector, let's, uh, it's going to be normal to, to these. I'm going to call this one right here as R1. Uh, this is going to be R1. And then the next one, I'm going to point it down this way. It's going to be R2, or actually, so that I just pointed this way, it's going to be R2. And then we have the normal vectors parallel to both, of, I mean, it's going to be perpendicular to it, and the plane, and so on. This is going to be our N. So we need to find R1 and R2, and then this is going to be, obviously, are going to be our R, I'll draw this in red. All right, so this is going to be from here to here. This is going to be our uh, R0 as always. And uh, yeah, lastly for completeness, I'll just finish this uh, rest of the screen through the background like this and it goes like that. All right, so that's the screen and there's the points and now let's just uh, determine these points. So R1 is equal to, yeah, so R1 is equal to, we'll subtract this one uh, or this one from this. So we're going to go uh, 0 minus 0 and then 400 minus 400 and then 600 I'm going to have 400 minus negative 400. So that'll be a plus. Yeah, so 400 minus uh, negative 400 is a plus. And then 600 minus 600. And this is a square bracket. We're doing a vector or a difference vector. This equals to 0. And then 800. And then we have a 0. And then factor out the 800. This equals to 800. And then this is going to be 0, 1, 0. So basically choose just the simplest one. So choose R1 equals to 0, 1, and 0. All right, and then the next one is R2. This equals 2. Yeah, this equals 2. We're going to go from 1,000 subtracted by these parts right here. Or actually, no, and this part subtracted by 1,000, uh, the, the camera positions. So what we're going to get is a 0 minus 1,000. And then 400 minus 0, and then 600 minus 0. This equals 2, this equals to negative 1,000, and then 400, and then 600. So what's a common denominator in all this? And I'm going to go with, well, I want to get rid of this negative. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the negative in front uh, just because uh, I want to. So that's going to be negative 200. And that's going to be now uh, 500. I mean, it's going to be 5. So uh, negative 1,000 divided by negative 200 is 5. And then this is uh, it's going to be negative 2. So all the zeros cancel, and this would be 4 divided by 2, and then add a negative. Uh, yeah, take out that. And this is going to be the next one's going to be negative 3. So uh, choose, and get rid of that uh, negative 2,000. So choose. R2, a simplified version of it, is going to be equal to negative 5, negative 2, and negative 3, like this. And write this better. All right. Absolutely perfect. All right. And now take the uh, normal vector. So normal vector equals the cross product. R1 cross R2 equals 2, like this. And then again, the uh, format I, uh, J. And then k, and then plug that in 0, 1, 0, and then 5, negative 2, negative 3, like that. All right, so this equals 2, uh, let's put it here actually, equals 2, cross this out, cross this out. So what we get is 1 times negative 3, it's negative 3, minus uh, this one 0 times that's 0. i, and then the next one's minus, and then this is going to be. 0 times negative 3 is 0, minus 0 times 5 is 0. And then this is j, and then the next one is going to be plus. Uh, block this out, so 0 times negative 2 is 0, 
minus 5. Okay, like that. All right. All right, so now that we get is, well, equals to negative 3i minus 5k. And uh, let's factor out the negative and write this in the other, other, other format with the triangle bracket. So negative 3, 0, 5. And then basically choose choose r, I mean n, just a simplified uh, version of it, get rid of the negative, n equals to 3, 0, and 5, like that. And then likewise, uh, find the equation of a plane. So I'll write this uh, p for plane. And this is the vector equation, n dot, uh, dot product, uh, r minus r naught, and r naught's always gonna be the uh, camera position. So this equals to negative, uh, this is going to be 3, 0, 5 dot x minus 1,000. And then the other one's going to be 0, 0. So yeah, I mean, uh, not, not 0, so uh, y minus 0 is for completeness right all. y minus 0 and then z minus 0 because r naught is 1,000, 0, 0 equals to 0. All right, multiply this out. This equals to uh, 3x. Yeah, so 3x, and then uh, I'll just put this in for completeness, 3x minus 3,000. I mean, yeah, 3,000 like that. And then here we have a uh, the zero, just go everything, uh, this, the y is gone. So now the next one is 5z equals to zero. So this equals two, move this over to the other side. We get a 3x plus 5z equals to 3,000, that's the equation of the plane. All right, then now the next one is, well, we gotta plug in our our line inside. So I'll just put, uh, I, I already had it copied and pasted, so we didn't change anything. So I'll just move this like this. So there's the line L, and I'll write plugging in L. So plug that in, so we get a, so the P, the equation of the plane, with the line inside, we get three, 230 plus 630 t like this and then plus this is y is gone plus the next one is z 102 plus 6 162 t equals to 3000 all right so we have this and uh yeah, let's put an arrow for completeness this part uh goes into here and then this goes into here, and then the y there is none. All right, so we have that. The next one is we'll just multiply it all out, and and then yeah, just do some uh, manual calculations again, and uh, eventually I'll just do it all with the calculator. But anyways, so we'll have three times six thirty. I'll, I'll do the t t's first. So yeah, six times uh, two thirty. Uh, yeah, I'm three times uh, six thirty. So three times zero is zero. Let's put zero t, and then three times is nine. Uh, three times six is eighteen. So one eight nine t, and then uh, five times one six two. Uh, that's going to be uh, yeah. So five times two is uh, is ten. So zero t carry the one. Five times six is thirty. Car add the one is one. Carry the three. Five times one is five plus three is eight. So eight ten like that. Yeah, that's eight ten t. So this would be plus. The t better, and then the next one is now put these uh, like terms inside. So these three times two thirty. So three times zero, is zero. Three times three is nine. Three times two is six. Six ninety, and then the next one is plus is five ten. So five times. I mean it's five times uh, one hundred two, not five times. So five times one hundred two. So five times two is ten. Add the one. Uh, five times zero is one. I mean it's zero. Add the one, and then five times five ten. Like that equals to three thousand. All right, so now, all right, so now let's put these all together. Let's do this one because it's longer, so we'll get a 3000 minus 690, because we'll move this over to the other side. 690, like that, 690, this equals zero. This it makes a 10, carry the nine, or uh, lower one, just using a lo long uh, subtraction. Uh, 10 minus nine is one. Nine minus six is three. Three minus three is, yeah, so three, like, actually, no, when, if we cross out this to make a 9, this has to be a 2. 
So 2, 3, 10. And the next one is, now we're going to subtract by 5, 10. All right, this goes to 0. This is 0. 3 becomes 13. This becomes 11. So 3 this is going to be 13 minus 5 is 8. And this is going to be, uh, I mean, not 11, 1. So 1. So 1, 8, 100, like that. Yeah, so that's 800. I'll put an equal sign to make it all match up. With this side, it's going to be T. And then this is going to be, um, add these up. 1, 8, 90, plus 8, 10. And lower this and move it. And put a plus sign. This is going to be 0. This is 0. Out of 1, 8, the 16, 17. Out of 1, 2, 7, 0, 0. All right, so T equals to 800 over 2700, zero, zero, and plug this into the calculator, uh, or actually instead of that, we could just simplify it further. Uh, just cross out the, the zeros, this equals to 18 over 27, uh, 27. And then what we could do is, yeah, what we could do now is, well, the, uh, this is 18, this is all, all of uh, these factors of nine. So what we'll do is uh, divided by nine, divided by nine on both sides. So we get a uh, two and over three. <laughs> yeah, so that's the answer. Two over three is, is the uh, parameter T. All right, so now continuing further, uh, we could do a calculation check. So again, using Wolfram Alpha and uh, just plug that inside. So solve for T and then we'll have three times 230 plus 630 T plus five times 102 plus 162 equals 3000 and solve for T. And again, that's the same equation here. And then solve that and it solves two, t equals two over uh, three, which is re remarkable. And plugging in our value for t, just plug it in right here in, in the uh, built-in graphing, uh, built-in one note calculator. Three equals, yeah, 650 and then negative two five and then 210 here for the z. And then graphing this out in GeoGebra, we get, well, we get this over here and there's the line. So there it is, if you plug in uh, t uh, two here, uh, or the parameter t is equals two over three, plug that inside here. For the point A, uh, this is the equation of the line there, the parametric equations. And there's the, uh, again, the clipping plane. Plug the, these values in, it automatically gets 3x plus 5z equals 3000. <laughs> so it gets 3x plus 5z equals 3000. Absolutely remarkable. And then uh, it shows here. So notice here, uh, the line crosses here like that. And let's just uh, graph this out ourselves. So that was the triangle. We already saw that it goes over it, so it doesn't actually clip it. It, it gets clipped before then. So let's go over clipping plane two, or uh, that was that line. So let's see the uh, clipping plane here. So there's the plane that we just draw, that we just graphed, and there's a triangle as it goes straight through that triangle there, that plane, and then the point A is this one here, and there's a point A. So we just need to clip it over here, and it automatically clips at B. So we don't need to clip at B. We just clip at A there. Epic stuff here. All right, so note that clipping at the top plane A, or at the top plane with this A, a uh, point, means we don't need to clip again at the right clipping plane B. So we don't need, don't, need to, don't need to clip there. Epic stuff. So now, let's look at the equation of the left clipping plane. All right, so uh, by symmetry, the left clipping plane is the same as the right clipping plane, but every Y is replaced by negative Y. All right, and uh, we can see that here. So let's say we had... There's their camera. So our camera goes to here. So this point right here, I'll, I'll put it here because it's going to be the same for all of ours. Zero, zero, and this goes to this point. This is going to be, or actually make it even closer just to fit everything in. This is, this point's going to be zero, four hundred, zero, and then it goes up like this. It goes up like this, and then this point, uh, this is the right clipping plane. Like that. And this point is at 0, uh, 400, 600. And this is our right clipping plane. All right. So right clipping plane. Now put it here, plane. And I'll uh, just underline this. And this, recall the equation of this. This was 2x plus 5y equals to 2,000. And let's just scroll up to uh, double check that. And uh, that was right over here. 
So where is the the uh, tubing plane right here? So yeah, two x plus five y equals two thousand, and that is this one right here. So so that is our right clipping plane. So that's the right clipping plane, and now uh, for completeness, yeah. So let's just draw the other side now. This goes like this, dot dot dot, and then this goes all the way across like this. Let's draw the plane. This goes down, this goes dot, 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 like that, all right? And this goes across like this. And there's the, the plane like that, and so on, and this is going to be our Z, this is our Y, this is our X, like that. All right, yeah, so then if you look at it, uh, the formulas were all created with everything the same, except the Y's flipped. So it's going to be 0, and then it's going to be negative 400. 600. This one's going to be 0, negative 400, 0. Yeah, so then this is the left clipping plane. Clipping plane. Underline it. So then we just replace the uh, y with negative. That turns out to be exactly correct. Uh, here I just made everything a bit smaller to fit in. So this is going to be a 2x plus 5 negative y. So we just put the exact same thing, put a negative y equals to 2,000. So in other words, our left clipping plane is going to be 2x plus, I mean negative, yeah, 5y. So for every point of uh, every y coordinate, we flip it over to the other side. 5y equals to 2,000. So we saved a bunch of time by symmetry, instead of having to do cross products and so on. All right, so now that we have that, so the next uh, setup is just, well, we'll just plug in our L. So plugging in L, the line, we get, and let's just, uh, let's just I have this still copied and pasted. I mean, I have it copied it from the line earlier. Let's remove this box. And there's a line, L, like that. So let's shift this up higher. All right, so we have, and now let's plug that in. So we get plane P 2x. X is 230 plus 630 and then T. Yeah, so T like this. And then this is going to be negative and then the Y, this is going to be 5. And then put that inside, negative 285 plus 390 T equals to 2000. All right. All right, so now the next setup is, let's do the same thing, multiply uh, the common denominator, I mean the common set of the t's first. So 2 times 630, 2 times 0 is 0. Let's put a t there. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 6 is 12. So 1260, like that. And then the next one is, uh, this is going to be negative 5 times 390. So 5 times 0 is 0, t. 5 times 9 is 45. Four, uh, put a 9, put a, carry the 4. 5 times 3 is 15. This is 19. 1950, like that. All right, and now the next setup is multiplied by the, t the uh, ones without the t. So 2 times 30, uh, 230. This is going to be, well, that's uh, 460. And then negative 5 times negative 285. That's going to be plus. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2, 5 times 8 is 40, so 2, and then, so we have a 2, then 5 times, um, yeah, so 5 times 8 is, uh, yeah, it's 40, carry the 2, or add the 2, but carry the 4, so four, four, 5 times 2 is 10, 14, so 14, 2, 5, like that, this equals to 2,000. So, all right, so now the next setup is we do, yeah, the next setup is, well, we could just uh, yeah, do the right side first. Is just, just to do it all by hand, just for fun. Not everything needs a calculator. So it's zero. So this is going to be ten. Okay, put a nine, and that means we also have to make this a, a, a nine as well. And this becomes a one because yeah, whenever you take one, you have to subtract a one from the next one. So ten times uh, zero. This is just going to be uh, zero. And uh, actually, we're, since zero minus zero, we're not actually subtracting by a bigger one. So this is going to be the 10. So this one has nothing, uh, no issue with that. So 10 minus 6 is 4. Then 9 minus 4 is 5. And then 1 minus 0 is 1. 
So we have a 154, and then the next setup is minus the 1425. Like that. This is going to be a 10. This is going to be a th uh, this is going to be a 3. Oops. Uh, this is going to be a 3. This is a subtraction. It's 3 minus uh, 2. This is going to be 5, 1, 1, 1. It's so 1, 1, uh, 5. Actually, no, we forgot the uh, 1 here. This is 1, 4, 2, 5, not 4, 2, 5. Minus 1. This is 0. So, yes, yeah, 1, 1, 5. Like that. So I'll put an equal sign, line it up. This is going to be, and put a T. This is going to be um, right here, 1260 minus 1950. Uh, but actually what this means is because this is a, uh, we're subtracting by a bigger number there, uh, what we'll do is I'm just going to put a, uh, put a negative like this. Then we're going to have a 1950 minus, uh, it's a minus. And it put a because we have, then we have to the way we're, the way subtraction works is because we have a you can't just subtract a bigger number so you have to go to put the bigger number subtract by the smaller and put a negative so we have this negative side like that because yeah, we're subtracting by a bigger number so we'll have it like this the difference and then put a negative so this equals negative this would be zero minus zero zero this would be fifteen this brings it down eight so fifteen minus six is nine eight minus two is six. That's zero, 690, negative 690, uh, t equals 115. So this means t is equal to 115 over 690, or negative. So put the negative. So block it off, move it over, put a negative, and this equals 2, or actually I'll just leave it. Or uh, yeah, actually when you plug in the calculator, it actually simplifies it over to negative 1 over 6. And we'll do a, a double check of that. So that's epic stuff there. All right, so let's do a calculation check as always with Wolfram Alpha. So solve for T and then 2 times 230 plus 630. And then have a minus right here, 5, etc. equals to 2000. Uh, solve it, uh, you get T equals negative 1 over 6. So yeah, 1 over 6 equals to 0.11667. Uh, then 115 divided by 690. Uh, equals to yeah point one one yeah one six six seven so it's correct and so you go go over here with the calculator you can go um, equals and then divided by yeah one one five divided by five is twenty is twenty three and then you can go uh, this right here six ninety divided by five this equals to one thirty eight then then one thirty eight is uh twenty three is a factor of one thirty eight so one thirty eight divided by twenty three equals six <laughs> so yeah so one over six epic stuff here yeah because I didn't want to uh, do that here because it just seems a bit uh, out there. So you divide by five and just simplify it further. Yeah, so you could, but I just want to use a calculator there. It's just a bit out there. Anyways, now the next setup here is you can even try it out five times. So uh, put these factors back in. So five times 23 divided by five times 23 times six because then these will all, all cancel. Just left with one over six equals 0.1667. Anyway, so plugging in our value of t into the line, into the equation of a line, into the parametric equations of the line, we get 230 plus 630 uh, the times negative 1 over 6 equals 125, etc. And so on, then get this negative 350, 75. And then graphing this out, we get in GeoGebra. And here again, to put the plane equation, put this... Uh, it just put this all in and it automatically solves it. And exactly, we had 2x negative 5y equals 2000. And then put the t as negative 1 over 6. Put down the parametric equation of a line as a point. And it gets 1, 2, 5, negative 3, 50, 75. 1, 2, 5, negative 3, 50, 75. And you, then you graph it out. It, looks, <laughs> it crosses right over there. So epic, epic stuff there. And let's just go and graph this out. So we graph this out and... So that's that top part, and let's go and go to clipping plane three. So there's a plane. So notice the giant part, but let's draw the uh, clipping four. What is this one? Uh, this is the, I think that, yeah, there's the point there. It goes right across there, but let's draw that triangle there. Clipping plane two, clipping plane, and then I had it here, three. Yeah. So you can, hit, those are the full planes, but then there's that triangle, the polygon, right on that spot. There's epic stuff. So, so there's a part we need to clip. So basically, we need to clip from C and A. And the reason uh, you don't clip it to B because it, it's uh, you're looking at it in 3D. So this one would be viewing it as 
going up overhead over overhead above you so hence for why you want to get that 3d uh, perspective onto the screen so epic epic stuff all right so uh equation of the bottom plane now all right so now let's go further and look at the equation of the bottom clipping line uh, clipping plane equation of the bottom clipping plane so the bottom clipping plane is just the x y plane which is uh, just a set of all values where z equals to zero. So, yeah, because if you saw, if you graph this all out, so if, here's our camera. Camera's at 1,000, 0, and 0. So then the clipping plane is going to be, well, two points. Um, this is going to go, let's say we have, uh, here's the uh, z, y, x, like this. This reaches all the way up to here. Then, uh, and then our plane is going to be, I mean, our screen. Let's move this down. Let's move this down here. So there's our screen. So screens like this. And there's our screen. Yeah, so there's our screen. And so the bottom points are just going to be from here 0, 400. And zero, and this one's going to be zero, uh, negative 400, zero, like that. Yeah, so the clipping plane is going to be bottom here to here, but this is, this is just parallel with, uh, just the overall plane like this. Well, yeah, just the overall plane, and the perpendicular, uh, line is just going to be straight, uh, uh, vertical like that, and this is at, yeah, it's going, uh, vertical up. Like that. So that the yes, yeah, so that the normal vector is pointing upward, and that uh, and and this is parallel to I mean this perpendicular to the plane where it's all these values and all these values are just at z equals zero, <laughs> so this is our plane. So yes, yeah, so the this point here is on uh, z equals zero. This point here is on z equals zero. This point here is on z equals zero. So they're all on z equals to zero plane. So that's the plane, like that. So plugging in L, so I'll write plugging in L, and uh, and again I have it still copied, and uh, whoops, I don't know why it went all the way there. Let's move it back here. Let's move it and move it here. All right, so we plug in L, and I'll move this upwards. So we plug in L, remove this thingy. Put the T up top, and then this is our plane now is Z equals zero, and plug that inside. Well, Z equals two, <laughs> that's just this part right here. Or we replace Z now with this 102 plus 162 T equals zero. Put the bracket just, just so it uh, looks like, yeah, we're plugging that in. So then move this over, we get T is equal to a negative 102 over 162, like that. And here, I'll just divide this out by 2. So 51 times 2 is 102. So 51, and the bottom one is going to be 81. So this, so this is a quick simplification. All right, so now if we just uh, plugging in uh, our value of t into the line, we get, and we get right here, so negative, uh, pull again the parameter t as negative 51 over 81. So we get these uh, values here equals negative one point yeah, negative one six six point six six etc. And then you have this negative five three and this other one right here all goes to zero as it should. So that was a good double check because it should be on the plane of z equals zero and it is. So if you if you put the clipping plane four as these uh, the coordinates and you just auto, auto calculate z equals zero. If you plug in t is negative fifty one over eighty one you get and then plug that inside you get this here as well. There's zero z. So it crosses here and it goes beyond, so the bottom clipping plane clips it here, but it's beyond that uh, projection, so it doesn't need to be clipped. So all that matters is this and this, and then everything else is beyond it. So here's a summary. So the line passes through only the two clipping planes, well, I mean only through two clipping planes, the top one at point A and the bottom one at, uh, yeah, and one of the sides, and one of the sides at point C, or the right side. I'll just say, and here is put, uh, and, uh, and the right side at point C, like that. Epic stuff here. Let's go to the uh, graph it all out. 
So that is all that stuff. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to remove. Actually, we'll keep that. Let's just go to the bottom. I think we did the bottom clipping plane is z equals zero. Like that in this point D. So it goes all the way behind it. Yeah, so you can see it better like that. Yes, epic stuff here. So all that matters is this uh, le the left and the top. And this is the, not the right side, the left side. So left side at point C. So that was that left side uh, viewing it from the camera. And epic stuff there. All right, so th thus the line gets clipped at the points. And then uh, on the top clipping plane at the point 650, negative 250, and 210. And on the left clipping plane at the point 125, negative 350, 75. And let's just say, let's just check we got those correct. Uh, this is going over here. And those points are, um, where's the points? Yeah, so there's a point A, 650, negative, two, negative 25, 210. Then point C, 125, negative 350, 75. And that is actually what we get. 1, 2, 5, 3, negative 350, 75, and 650, negative 250, 210. So epic, epic stuff. All right, so now uh, let's take a look at question two. And this one asks, if the clipped line segment is projected on the screen window, identify the resulting line segment. So let's take a look at the solution. So we need to project the clipping or the clipping points or the clip points. Let's go uh, clipped. Point 650, uh, negative 25, uh, 210, that's the first one. Well, that's the top one. And then 125, negative 350, 75 is the left point. And determine the resulting endpoints uh, on the screen. Let's go here on the screen. So what this means is, well, if we go back to our graph, our 3D graphing calculator, uh, here, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to project this onto the screen. I'm going to hide all of these random planes. I'm going to hide the plane like this and then hide the uh, left one clipping plane. Yeah, so we need to project it from A and uh, this, um, this point C onto the screen. So it's going to look something like this from, uh, but then it's going to be from here to here. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to project it. It's going to go upwards on it somewhere like that. So anyways, yeah, to determine what happens uh, or how to project it, first let's consider how the X, Y, and Z coordinates get projected from 3D onto the 2D screen. All right, so let's say we have our uh, camera here. So here's our camera, and this is going to be, let's say it's at a distance X, or let's move this uh, down further. All right, so... Here's how they get projected. So we have, uh, let's say this, 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 this is the distance x, oh, so this distance x here. And there's the origin right here, called the O. And now what we're gonna have is, this is the screen. So the screen looks something like this. And then it goes like this, and like that. And then let's say we are projecting this point onto the screen. So we're gonna have to draw a perfect straight line from it to the screen. So it has to connect it all the way to the screen. All right, so let's say uh, instead of uh, this, so let's say we have this distance here to here is a thousand. So this is uh, the thousand that we're looking at. Erase this little thingy. All right, so from here to here is a thousand. But then from this point here, let's say this coordinates of this point are uh, it goes from, um, let's draw this all out like this. Uh, this, this coordinates has, I'll put a uh, dot, dot, dot this way. I'll go in the wide side up, then the, the, then downwards like this. Or let's erase this. So let's say from here to here is X. Then that's the X coordinate of it. And let's just say this point is X, Y, Z. And then it gets to this point where this point is, let's say it's projected as x prime, or just x with a dash, yeah. x prime, y prime, and this is the projected coordinates of that point, like that. So we just project it through a straight line. All right, so that's the x, this is the z, and this is the y. So that's the y, is this setup like that, all right. And now the next setup is, uh, let's say that's the, um, projected line let now I mean this is the this is the point let's see the projected point now is gonna be and also finish this off 
Let's finish the screen off like that. All right. Like this. All right, so let's finish that off. And now this part right here, uh, this is going to be, it's going to have a new Y and a new Z. This is Z prime. And this is going to be Y prime like that. Or actually, let's uh, put the Y on top there. All right, so that is the projection. So we have, we can have two similar triangles. And uh, we can see that here, I'm going to draw this uh, thin line across like that. So now we have two similar triangles. We have the Z, so the Z projects up to the Z prime, and we have the Y projects up to the Y prime. Uh, so I'll write this one as one, this one as two. So let's write these out. So we have the first triangle, so for the Z, how it gets projected, uh, this goes from uh, just like this. All right. All right, here's fix that up. Let's move this over. So this is the one and this is the Z uh, parts. So we have the point here. This is at Z. And then this this distance is X. And then this uh, this height is just Z prime. And then this full length is a thousand. All right, and then similarly for the, the, the uh, Y, we have the top triangle like that. And this this goes from uh, from here from y to y prime is the exact same thing, but we're doing a with a y. So in fact, I'll just copy this exact same thing here, copy, and then paste, and then move this here. So we have the exact same thing. Then remove this with a y, y and y like this. Yes, yeah, so y and y prime. Let's go y prime. All right, so y and y prime, and then uh, lastly, those are that's how the z and uh, y get projected. The x gets projected wherever the x is, just goes to zero. So we just have uh, x goes to to zero. So I'll write three. X goes to zero. So x goes to zero, like that. So we have the the all the x's goes to zero. All right, so now we can determine a formula for the projection of both the y and z coordinates using similar triangles, while the x coordinate just becomes equal to zero. So uh, x goes to zero, and these ones goes to here. So we could use similar triangles, and let's solve that out. Let's just do it for the z, and then it'll be the same for the uh, uh, y, like this. So let's say we have this. Let's set this up better. So like this. All right, and this is going to be our uh, point here. I'm going to write this dash dash like that, or actually instead of a dash line, put a straight line like this. Whoops. All right, here, fix that up anyway. So this is going to be a Z. And now what we'll do is we need a similar triangle set up. And this is going to be our angle theta. This is angle theta. And this is going to be a right angle. This is going to be a right angle. Um, let's remove that. So it's just common sense right angle. And this is going to be this height here is our Z prime. So then this height here is going to be Z prime minus Z. And likewise, this is going to be X. And now this, this distance here is going to be a thousand minus X. That's because this whole thing is a thousand. All right. All right. So thus we could apply similar triangles. So similar triangles. Like this, and for completeness, we could even write just write this out as tan theta equals to well, you could have similar triangles z over 1000 minus x. This also equals to well, this angle you could use tan of this one, so z uh, prime minus z over uh, this is going to be x. Like that. All right, so let's do some simplification. Uh, let's move this over to this side. And then this over to the other side. So we get a zx, z times x equals to, now we have a z uh, like this. Or actually, instead of that, uh, instead of this, we'll move, the, we'll move the x over to the side and then this part, and then th this separately, but keep the 1000 over x. So that's what we'll do. That, that's a better setup there. So we'll have a zx, move this up top, zx. And then uh, this is going to be divided by 1000 minus x, then plus z equals to z prime. And I'll just move that over. Uh, move the z prime further so that we can multiply the top and bottom. 
by 1000 over x. Like that. And then move this even further, equals z prime. All right, so we do that so we don't change anything, just we have the same common denominator. And this is gonna be now, uh, multiply that out inside, and then add those all up. So z times x plus uh, z times a thousand minus z x over 1000 minus x equals to z prime. All right, so what we have now is, yeah, what we have now is uh, zx uh, plus z times a thousand. Well, these ones cancel zx, zx. All right, so we're just going to be left with z uh, times a thousand or a thousand, uh, yeah, let's put it like that, over a thousand minus x equals to z prime. Uh, or what we could do is, well, I'll move this over. Yeah, I'll move this over to the other side. Just put z prime equals and then just do some simplifications. Okay, move this over to this side. So we get a z prime is equal to is equal to z times a thousand divided by a thousand minus x. This can be times it by one over a thousand. So simplified and then divided by one over a thousand. So we get rid of the thousands. So then what we end up having is final equation z prime equals to well a thousand cancels. We have a z on top over 1,000 divided by 1,000 is, is 1, minus then x over 1,000. So we just have 1,000 there, as opposed to 2,000s there. Yes, epic, epic stuff there. So there is our, our projection. And similarly, I'll write down similarly for the y, it's the exact same uh, triangles. So y prime is equal to y over 1 minus, and it's, it's still going to be the same x, so 1,000, uh, x over 1,000 like that epic stuff all right so this means that our clip uh, clip points from problem one or question one um yeah question one become projected to new points using the above formula so clipping point one was 650 uh, minus 225 and then 210 this becomes well zero and then we each one of these we have to do uh plug in that value for the um yeah, for the y and the z so and then the x becomes zero so the 650 goes to zero. So this becomes that. And then this one we have to go, uh, we have to put the y or the z and then divide it by one minus x over a thousand. And the x is 650. So we'll go negative 25 divided by one minus 650 over a thousand. This equals two. This is the y co uh, co uh, coordinate like that. Negative 71.42. Uh, I rounded up to 74.3. And then the next one is 210 divided by one minus 650 over a thousand. This just equals to 600, which it should be because it's right on the edge. All right, so that's what happens there. And then, uh, yeah, just get rid of these equal signs. I put these equal ones just because they're built in calculator. So we simplified, and this is negative 71.43 and 600. So we put these in, round it up, and there's the, this is projected over there. And the next one is 125, negative 350, 75 goes to zero. And then 350, put that in, it's negative 400. And then this 75 divided by one minus 125 number. We put in the x uh, over here for that. And then it's 85.7143, et cetera, is 400. So we get zero, negative 400, 85.71. Yeah, so thus the resulting line segment can be determined using the vector equation of a line. Again, remember the line is r equals to r naught plus t times uh, v vector, the parallel vector. And so we'll just take these two points as, we'll use this as R0. So there is the first point R0, this is a projected clipping point. And then we'll, we'll extend that over to this point, the, the second uh, clipping point that's being projected, uh, and, or that is projected. And then we'll just take, yeah, so that's the R0. And then the difference will be the, the vector. So we'll have this one subtracted by this one here. So we'll have negative 400 minus negative uh, 71.43 and this with built in. Calculator is equals to negative 328.57 and just put that down here. And then the next one, 85.71, that's here, subtracted by 600, equals negative 514.29, and let's put that here. And then the uh, x coordinates all go to zero. Uh, I mean, the x coordinates go to zero, zero minus zero. Well, we actually already have that already, zero minus zero. So that's zero and zero, etc. 
And this is for parameter t from 0 to 1. And whenever you have, you have from 0 to 1, for when you form a line, a vector equation of a line from these two points, uh, the, the first one's going to be r naught. When you plug in 0, you're just going to get the r naught values. If you plug in 0, this all vanishes. We're just left with this one, which is just this. And then if you plug in 1, we get, uh, if you plug in 1, this becomes 1. So then uh, we'll have this part here. So if you add these up, so 0 plus 0, 0, and then the negative 71.43. Plus this, we'll have a negative, uh, negative of, an, of, of uh, negative 71.43. So this would vanish with this one. So all we're left with is negative 400. And likewise, a 600 minus 600, this, this is, disappears. All we're left with is 85.71. So in other words, when t is 1, we get this point. When t is 0, we get this point. So th that's a line circuit. So we can graph all this out in GeoGebra. All right, here's the clipping plane 3. I made that polygon just to make it easier to see it as opposed to the full plane. And there's the uh, projection line. Well, actually, this is the equation of the projection line, but when we only want the segment. So we only want the segment from uh, projection 1 to projection 2. And this is projection 1 is 0, negative 71.43, 600, and then 0, and then 0, negative 485.71. So that's the point. And then you could uh, project the line. You can make a, if you form a line, you get this right here. This equation, 0, negative 328.57 lambda instead of t, they just use lambda, negative 514.29. That's, that's exactly this equation. So that's a vector equation of a line. And then, then if you have the projection, you can just write segment from projection point 1 to 2. So that goes like that. So there is how it looks like. <laughs> so this line gets projected onto here. And we clip off these edges. All the screen is left with is over here. Absolutely amazing. So this is what's going on behind the uh, yeah, behind the computer screen or behind the camera, etc. cetera, when it's taking photos. So there it is. And let's just uh, add those other stuff there. See, which is the, uh, where is the line? So projection line. So there's a full projection line. It goes all the way across. There's, there's on the back side, but we want to clip it. So hence, I just moved it like this and put the projection segment. So we only want the projection segment. Whoops. Stop moving. All right. And then we just remove the line. So there it is. So that gets projected onto the, and the reason, uh, like I said before, it goes to the 600. Uh, this is right at the edge. Yeah. So this is right on this plane. Whoops. So this is right on this plane. Because of that, it goes straight to the 600 there. And likewise, on the left side here, this, this one is right on this, this plane, so it has to go straight to the 400. And that's projection point 2. This is projection point 1 uh, on top there. So yes, epic, epic stuff. All right. All right, now let's take a look at question 3. This one says, use parametric equations to plot the edges of the screen window, the clipped line segment, and its projection on the screen window. And then add sight lines connecting the viewpoint to each each end of the clip segments to verify the projection is correct. All right, let's take a look at the solution. So I'm going to skip the first part here because instead of using parametric equations, it's just a bit too much for the screen windows. Uh, I'm going to skip this because GeoGebra has already built in line segments without needing to put in parametric equations. It also has built in uh, equations of a plane that uh, calculated and so on. But that was a good uh, exercise. This one is just a bit bit too much. So we already have that graphed out. And then the next, then the, thus just the next thing that we need to do is add sight lines connecting the viewpoint to each of the clipped segments to verify the projection is correct. What this means is, uh, thus we can simply add lines connecting the camera and the projection. And if they connect the clip points, then the projection is correct. Because so that's all the projection is, it's just a straight line. That is, we, if, uh, that is, we get a straight line. Yeah, that is, we get a straight line connecting the camera, the clip points, and the projection on the screen. So if they all connect, and it's right. So we could do a segment from uh, right here from the camera, segment 1000 up to projection one, and segment 1000 and then up to projection two. And if we do that from here to here, it, they both cut through the lines, so hence it's right. So note that the lines connect directly through the clip lines, thus proving our projection is correct. Amazing stuff. And we could see that. So there's a sight line one, so just connect a segment right here. Uh, it connects the camera to the projection one, and then sightline two connects the, uh, this is the bottom one, connects the camera to the projection two. And you could uh, zoom in there, and you can see that. See, it, so this one, because this line segment is just from here to here, but it connects through it, meaning it's, it, the projection is correct. This one, it goes from here to here, and it, this is connecting through it, that means it's correct.
So epic stuff there. So that's all the projection is. Pretty fascinating stuff. All right, so now let's continue on to question four. And this one states a rectangle with vertices 621, negative 147, uh, 206, and 563, 31, 242, and uh, 657, negative 111, uh, and 86. And the last point, 599671222 is added to the scene. And the line intersects this rectangle. So if you have a rectangle like this, and it goes through it. And uh, to make the rectangle appear opaque, in other words, not transparent, in other words, it, you can't see the line behind it where it's behind it, a programmer can use a hidden line rendering which removes the portions of the objects that are behind other objects. So basically, we we'll remove this section here as opposed to uh, drawing a line straight through it, yeah, as opposed to going straight through like that. And uh, yeah, so it removes the objects behind other objects. And now we're asked, identify the portion of L that should be removed. And in this case, again, so you're going to have to remove this portion right there. So uh, let's uh, take a look at the solution. So let's graph out the rectangle inside GeoGebra as well as its projection onto the screen. All right, so uh, recall the equation for the projection from uh, 2D, I mean 3D to 2D. And uh, yeah, we could scroll over to that uh, equation that we set up. And that's just right here. So we have uh, the projection uh, Z or Y prime equals to Z or X. I mean Z or Y divided by one minus X over a thousand. So we project it on there and uh, let's go and uh, write that down. So here's the calculations. So for the first point, 621, negative 147 and 206, we project that. So this is the rectangle and this is the projection. So we go uh, zero, this was 621 becomes zero. So this projects to zero. Then we'll have this negative 147 divided by 1 minus 621 is the x divided by 1,000. And then plug this into the calculator. This equals 2. Yeah, so this is our built-in calculator, negative 387.86. And that's this number right here. And then over here, then the next one is the z1, 206 maps to 1. And then you're going to go 206 divided by 1 minus 621 divided by 1,000. And we're going to get this number. All right, so we get that 543.5. 3 round up to 5, 4. So th this is the pro point. And do that the same thing for the all for the next three uh, coordinates. So this is the rectangle. It's 5, 6, 3. This maps on to over here, 0, 70.94, 5, 5, 3.78. And again, you always have to use a different x. So this x goes in there. The 6, 5, 7 is for this one and so on. So this is 6, 5, 7, uh, negative uh, 1, 1, 1. That's this right here. And then the next one, 599, et cetera, 599, 6, 7, 1, 2, 2. So you plug that in, you get these these values. And then if you graph the GeoGebra, so what you could do is, well, you could just type rectangle. And uh, actually what I did was, yeah, first I wrote the rectangle 1, 6, 2, 1, negative 1, 4, 7, and 2, 0, 6, and et cetera, put in the, those coordinates for the rectangle. And then you uh, draw the polygon with the rectangle as, as the points. And then I'll do the projection here. This is the projection, uh, 0, negative 3, 8, 7.86 and then 543.454. That's just this projection. The next uh, projection two is this one right here, 78.94. That's just this right here. So anyways, so I plug in those projections and then I do, uh, then I create a segment. Actually, no, I don't create it. These are auto created by GeoGebra for some reason. Uh, these ones, I just, I just go into here and create a polygon. So projection R1, projection R3, uh, and then R4, R2, and I made sure this is in order because otherwise you're going to have a different uh, cross section. Yeah, I, I, what I mean by this, I, I made sure it's a rectangle, otherwise you would have had something that looks like this. If, you, if you, this is the point, you go here, and then if so, if you do it out of order, so I made sure that uh, I had to rearrange it so that it looks like a rectangle, so you do it in order, like that, as opposed to a star or some random shape. It gets. And then I also have a sight line checking here, and you can change this R1 uh, here, and you can draw a line uh, through here, through here, through uh, uh, etc., and see if it's uh, just to double check the work. So we'll do that. I'm gonna lower this. All right. All right. So here uh, we get to the uh, GeoGebra. Let's move this around. So there's what we have. So there's the rectangle. Let's just go back here. So there's the rectangle here. Let's just zoom it out and move this around. Yeah, so we have the line, it penetrates through the uh, rectangle like that, so it goes through it. And then if you project on a screen, so it, looks like, it looks like that, but but again, we want to make the uh, the uh, rectangle opaque so that 
we have to clip this from here from here into uh, the point uh, wherever it's being projected out. So it's going to be somewhere around here. So what, what this means is we have to look at the point that it goes through this. Yeah, so it's going to be uh, somewhere around uh, this point here, somewhere around here. So we have to find the intersection of the line to that point. And then here's a slight line checking here just to uh, just to make sure that we're going through. So this point goes through here, it goes through there. And this segment is just from the camera to the projection R1. So if we do R2, it should connect through the second point. Yeah, so there it is. It connects straight to this one here. So uh, I'm not drawing it from here to here. I'm drawing it from here, the camera, uh, all the way to here. But it cut, uh, cuts through that. Let's do a couple more. Sight line checking, and then this one here, three. So there it is. It cuts through the bottom. Then last one, four, just to double check. All right, there it is. And it connects from here. So all this is is from projection this one is actually just from the camera up to projection r4 so from here to here and it connects through here and, and that is a double check that we got right anyway so that is what we have so we have to clip out that segment all right let's continue for this is epic stuff here all right so let's see what we are asked so we're asked to remove the portion of the line behind the rectangle that is projected onto the screen so if you look at it here uh, we have to get the parts beyond the rectangle and that's going to be somewhere around here. So in other words, this part here. So from there to here, we, have, we need to clip out the segment. So we got to get rid of that because that's behind uh, the rectangle. So we have to clip that out. So to do this, we need to determine two points. The point at which the line intersects the rectangle. Yeah, so we've, once we find that line that intersects, then we can just project that onto the screen. So we get this point project onto the screen. So we have that point. Then the next point is is the point at which the projected line intersects the bottom boundary of the projected rectangle. So in other words, we have to find this point, that's number one, project it onto here, and then we gotta find this point where the line intersects this bottom boundary, and now we have the two points and we can clip these out. So that is some <laughs> fascinating stuff that we gotta do. All right, so let's look at the first one. And this is why it's a discovery project. It's a, again, intense project. So point of intersection of the line and rectangle. So to, de to determine the point of intersection of the line and rectangle, we first determine the equation of, of the plane. Whoops. All right, back here. So of the plane that contains the rectangle. So we got to find this, uh, this the plane of this rectangle. So it's going to be something like this that, that uh, contains this inside it. So we got to find that out. All right, so to do that, uh, we just use the equation of a plane. So our P, uh, this is going to be the normal vector dot product with the R minus R naught vector. This and then set that equal to zero. So if we look at our rectangles, it's going to be something like this. Let's say rectangles like this. And all we need is uh, several points. And it doesn't matter which ones we pick. So uh, let's just take a look at, let's say this, the first point here. Let's take the first three. So we'll take these ones, 621, negative 147, 206, and uh, write that down here. Uh, I'm going to write it right here. In fact, this is actually the right location, but it doesn't matter which location because it's all on the same plane. So negative 147, uh, you have a negative 147 and 206. Then this next point is going to be, uh, let's put this 563 and 31. So we need three points actually, um, and then 242. Two. Yeah, two, four, two, like that. Now let's just double check. So five, six, three, three, one, and then two, four, two. And we have this, yeah, five, six, three, three, one, two, four, two. And the next one, six, five, seven, negative one, 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 and then eight, six. All right, so put that here. This is going to be six, five, seven, negative one, 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 eight, six. So we have three points. It doesn't matter if these are in the same, um, same actual, same vertices, it doesn't matter, because even if this is the actual one is over here, uh, the lines are still going to be um, on the plane. All right, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to uh, get a vector here. I'm going to call, uh, call this vector, uh, let's call this vector A. Yeah, so let's say we have vector A. And then this, this, vec uh, this uh, vector here is B. All right, and now let's say we have a, a point here. Let's say we have... Yeah, let's say we had the origin is somewhere in, inside the rectangle through it. So, so origin is somewhere there. Let's just draw it through it here. Let's say it's somewhere across here is the origin. And we'll have dot, dot, dot like this indicate it's a vector. 
let's say this is the R naught vector, and then we have a generic one all the way up to here, and this is going to be the R uh, vector like that, just for the X, Y, Z. So then the uh, R naught is going to be this point right there. All right, so that's what we have. So we need to find the normal vector. So the normal vector, let's say the normal vector looks something like this, and this is going to be perpendicular to this, and the normal vector is going to be N. The normal vector is also perpendicular to the A and B, so that means we could solve them. Yeah, all right, and uh, yes, yeah, so it's parallel. I mean, it's perpendicular to it, and uh, we could try to draw this. It looks something like this. So perpendicular to A, perpendicular to uh, <laughs> B as well. Let's make that actually straighten up. All right, here, let's fix that up to make it look actually more uh, perpendicular. So there's the n vector. So the first thing to do is, well, we need to get the n vector. That's a cross product of A and B. And I'll write this on the other side so it's more visible, B. So let's find A and simplify it as before. So A is equal to, you know, so this vector, I'm gonna just speed up the calculations like before and uh, put a bracket like this and put the uh, subtraction here. So we're gonna subtract this 563 from this uh, vector. So 563 or the this coordinate from that coordinate to get a, a direction vector from here to there. Yeah, or a difference vector, but uh, here uh, notice that uh, we're subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number, so that means this has to be in the negative side. So 563 minus 621 is going to be written like this. Put a negative here and put a 621 minus 563. So we'll have it on the reverse, but then make it a negative sign. So this is going to be 11. And this is going to be a, um, so you know, yeah, that's going to be 11, so this is going to be a 1. Then this is a lot less than that, so we'll put a 1 and then take this out and put it as a 5. All right, so 11 minus 3 is going to be 8. So 8 and then 11 minus 6 is going to be 5. So negative 5, 8, and this 5 minus 5 is 0, so this is going to be negative 58. Now the next part is going to be uh, this 31 minus uh, negative 147. So it's going to be 31 minus plus 147. It's going to be 8, 7, 1. And then the next one is 2, 4, 2 minus 2, 6. So 2, 4, 2 minus 2, 0, 6. And subtract, this is going to be a 12. This is going to be a 3. And this is going to be 12 minus 6 is 6. And then 3 minus 0 is 3. Uh, is, yes, 3, so 36. So that is what we have. And uh, what I'm going to do here, actually, I'm, I'm just going to take out some... Yeah, some factors. Well, I'm just going to take out a uh, one half. So this equals to one half. I'll leave this a negative in there just to make it getting a bit simpler. So 58 divided by two. Yeah, so two goes into five twice, and we're going to have a one uh, left over. 118. That's going to be, and then the two goes into the nine times. So 29. Next one here, seven, 178 divided by two. So put in this two goes into 17 eight times. Remainder one, and then there's a 18 nine. So yes, if you like my uh, fast. Uh, long division, right? Or long multiplication. Yeah, yeah, long division. So now take a half from 36. One goes into three once, and there's a remainder one, and then one, uh, then two goes into 16 eight times. All right, so we have that. And uh, let's just choose the simpler one. Choose A, just the, this vector to be equals to a negative 29, 89, and 80, 18. Because we don't care about the magnitude. All right, now the next one is, well, let's find the B vector. This equals 2, and we're going to do the same setup. All right, so the B vector is right over here. So we're going to subtract uh, this one, uh, this subtract from this. So 657 minus 621, et cetera. So this is going to be 657 minus 621. I believe that's what it was. Yeah, 657 minus 621. That's going to be 7 minus 1 is going to be equals 2. It goes to 6. And then 5 minus 2 is 3. And this is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. The next one is, yeah, the next one is right here. Negative 1, 1, 1 minus 147. So that's going to be a plus. So we'll just do a negative, a negative 1, 1, 1. And then plus, actually, yeah, plus 147. Uh, yeah, so this is this is the same thing as writing 147 minus 111. So let's move this on the other side. So the same thing as 147 minus 111. Let's do that. So 7 minus 1 is 6. 4 minus 1 is 3. And then this 1 minus 1 is 0. So leave that like that. And then the last one, 86 minus 206. So that's the same thing as writing uh, 206. Put a negative minus 86. 
my event. This goes negative, six minus six is zero. This is 10, this is two, this becomes one, 120. All right, so that's 120, and then let's simplify this, make, uh, remove a one half. So 36 divided by two is 18. And then we have another 18, and 120 is gonna be negative 60. So we could take out another two. So this equals two, one over four. This is gonna be nine, and nine, and then negative 60 divided by two is negative 30. Yeah. And uh, we can keep going. We can take a factor out of 3 now. So 1 over 4 times 3 is 1 over 12. Uh, this is going to be now 3, 3, and then this is going to be negative 10. So we'll just choose a simpler one. Choose b vector equals to 30, 3, 3, negative 10, like that. All right, so thus we have the n vector is going to equal to a cross b. So this equals to the i, j, k, and then plug this all inside. And this is going to be, well, the b one's going to the bottom, 3, 3, negative 10. Then we have the, the a one is negative 29, 89, and 18. So negative 29, 89, and 18. Negative 29, 89, and 18. All right, so now let's do the cross products. The first one to cross out this, and I'll put this like this, cross that out. And this equals two, then put this uh, like this. This is gonna be, now we multiply 89 times uh, 10, negative 10, negative eight, nine, zero, and then minus by 18 times three. All right, and this is gonna be the i. The next one's gonna be plus, get rid of this, put it like this, and now we're gonna go, actually it's gonna be minus, the middle one's a minus. So minus, and then negative 29 times negative 10, that's gonna be plus 29, zero, minus 18 times three, like that. And I'm gonna shift this over. All right here, I just shifted it over, uh, i, I mean this is j, and then plus, that's a plus, and then do the same thing for the last one. This is a three, cross like that. Put a bracket, this is gonna be negative 29 times three, minus 89 times three. And this is K, like that. All right, so that's what we have now. And let's continue with our journey of uh, manual multiplication. So this one, 18 times four, I mean, I mean times three, 18 times three is equal two. So three times eight is 24, put a two is three times three, three times one is three plus two is 54. So then this means negative eight, nine, uh, zero minus five, four. And uh, since we're both, uh, these are both negative, it's the same thing as adding them up. So what I'll do is uh, <clears throat> avoid confusion. I'm gonna put this in bracket, put a negative, and put a plus like this, so we add them up, so this becomes four, nine, nine plus five is gonna be 14, carry the one, so nine, four, four, and then put the negative down, so we have this negative down there. So it's gonna be negative nine, five, four, I mean, ne yeah, negative nine, four, four, and what I'll do is, well, actually, I will do that, do that one after, so this is gonna be equal to, we will do that later. So the next one here, this is just gonna be uh, 290, minus, um, this is gonna be 54, so 18 times three is 54, 54, this is gonna be now, this, this is 10, this comes eight. So 10 minus four is six, eight minus five is three, and then two, two three, six. And then lastly here, yeah, so here we have multiple uh, stuff here. So this is gonna be a negative 29 times three. This is, let's go 29 times uh, three. All right, times it by uh, I'll put a negative just for completeness. So negative 29, so three times nine is uh, 27. Two, carry the two, and then three times uh, two is six, so 87, like that, or negative 87. And lastly here, this is subtracted by uh, 89 times three. This is gonna be three times nine is 27. Carry the two, three times uh, eight is 24, 26. All right, so then when we uh, subtract these, it's the same thing as writing negative. Uh, this is gonna be 87 plus, negative 87 minus 267, that's gonna be the same thing as writing uh, 87 plus 
uh, let's move this here. Yeah, it's uh, 87 plus 267 and put a negative. So it's going to be uh, 87. Yeah, so 7, uh, seven plus uh, 7. Oh, it's not writing. Okay, 7 plus 7 is 14. Carry the 1, 8 is going to 9. It plus 6 is 15. So 1, put a 1. It's going to be 3. So negative 3, 5, 4. All right, so well, then what we get is... Yeah, so what we get is finally this equals two and write it in the triangle bracket format. So negative nine, four, four. Now this one is two, three, six, but there's a negative at the top there. So negative two, three, six. And then lastly, this is gonna be negative three, five, four. So this is the normal vector. And uh, now we could factor this out further. Well, I'm not gonna explain how I did it. So I just did it with a calculator. If you take out one, one, negative one, one, eight, uh, what this becomes is this goes into this actually uh, eight times, and this one goes in twice, and this one goes in three times. So we'll have uh, eight, two, three, and then uh, we'll do a calculation check later. I just want to get rid of that. Uh, I do not want to do more calculations <laughs> with these giant numbers. So we're going to choose the n uh, vector equals two, the simple one, eight, two, three, like that. All right, so this means then that, uh, so thus, so that's what we have is the plane, the equation of plane is going to be uh, n, n vector dot product with r minus r naught equals to zero. So this means this is going to be written as eight, two, three, the dot product of is x minus, then the r naught vector. So again, recall, we chose r naught to be this one, six, two, one, negative one, four, seven, and two, zero, six. So this is going to be six, two, one, and then this is going to be the next one is be y minus and then y minus uh, 147 actually minus plus 147 to so minus negative 147 so it's going to be plus 147 and then the last one yeah, is going to be z minus 206 this equals to zero and just to double check uh, 206 so yeah 621 negative 147 206 uh, 621, uh, negative 147, and 206, and then multiply these inside. We get, we get 8x. So I'll do the, I'll multiply this inside the other ones later, but I'm going to go 8x. All right, so that's 8x, and then this one's two times, uh, uh yeah, yeah, dot product, just multiply corresponding, uh, the corresponding coordinates. So two times, uh, y1 plus, uh, yeah, y plus 147. So we'll just do the y plus 2y. So 8x plus 2y plus 3z. And then, then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, uh, I'm going to multiply each one inside. So 8 times negative 6, 2, 1, and then move it over to this side. So what we'll have is here, I'm going to write this <clears throat> as well, 6, 2, 1. And actually what I'm going to do is uh, move it down a bit. So put the 6, 2, 1 like that. And yeah, so then we'll have it multiplied by 8. So times by 8. This equals to eight times one is as one. I mean, is eight. Then eight times two is sixteen. Carry the one. Eight times six. Uh, I think that is forty-eight. Then forty-nine. Four. Yes, yeah, so a four nine six eight. And then uh, the next one is going to be two times one four seven. So this is going to be plus. And then this is going to be one four seven times by two. This equals two. Well, two times seven is fourteen. Carry the one. Two times uh, four is eight. Add the one is nine, and two times one is two. Two nine four. Next one. Yeah, because so we made a mistake, because we moved this over. So this is a plus, but we moved it over. This is gonna be a minus now. So this is gonna be a minus. Yes, minus two nine four. The next one is going to be well, not a plus. Yeah, actually, it is a plus. It's a negative. We move it over to this side. It becomes a plus. So that's gonna be plus two zero six multiplied by three, and then times it by times it by three. This is gonna equal to three times six is. 18, carry the 1, 3 times uh, 3 is 0, add the 1, 3 times 2 is 6, so 6, 1, 8. So yeah, it's just uh, bear with me, I, I kind of like doing the uh, manual calculations, it's a good mental workout. So for the next one, 4, let's put this uh, like this actually, 4, 9, 6, 8, minus, uh, let's go 2, 9, 4. This is going to be, well, subtract 8 minus 4 is is 4. So this is 16, this becomes 8, 16 minus 9 is 7, 8 minus 2 is 6, and this can be 4 minus 0 is, is uh, 4. So 4, 6, 7, 4, and the next one plus 6, 1, 8, plus 
6, 1, 8. So 8 plus 4 is 12. Add the 1, and it's going to be 1. Is it 18, 9? Yeah, so 7 plus 1 plus 1. Then the next one is 12. Carry the 1, and it's going to be 5. 5, 2, 9, 2. All right, so that means our equation of a plane is, I'll write P, it's going to be 8x plus 2y plus 3z equals to 5, 2, 9, 2. <laughs> Absolutely uh, remarkable stuff like that. This is the uh, equation of the plane that contains the rectangle. I'll move this down here. Or I'll just move it uh, down a bit like this, all of it together, and box that. Actually, we don't need to box that. We box this whole thing in like that. So there's, there's the equation of the plane. All right, now that we have this, let's do a quick calculation check. So with GeoGebra, you can actually do a cross product and again, uh, find the equation of a plane just by putting in the rectangle. So here's the uh, cross product. So we go negative two, nine, uh, and then 89, 18. A cross product with three, three, negative 10. We get negative nine, four, four, negative two, three, six, and negative three, five, four. And that is right, right over here. Negative nine, four, four, negative two, three, six, negative three, five, four. And then here I just simplified it somehow. Uh, beyond even GeoGebra, GeoGebra doesn't even simplify it. Uh, and, and now if you go here, rectangle, yeah, so here uh, I just put the plane, put the rectangle inside, you get uh, the uh, automatically calculus the plane, so 8, 6, uh, 8x plus 2y plus 3z equals 5, 9, 5, 2, 9, 2. So that's right here, 8, 8x, 2y plus 3z equals 5, 2, 9, 2. And then uh, also here, like I factored out the 1, 1, 8. So, so 1, 1, 8, you get 8, 2, 3. So we take this 9, 4, 4 divided by 1, 1, 8 gets 8. Use built-in calculators, put space, equals, and we get 8 like that. Then 2, 3, 6 divided by 1, 1, 8 is 2, and there's the uh, 3 right there. And lastly, this one, this big giant calculation here, 4, 9, 6, 8 minus 2, 9, 4 uh, plus 6, 1, 8. And then we'll also with the multiplication. So 6, 6, six uh, 2, 1 times 8 minus 1, 4, 7 times 2, and 2, 6 times 3. So we have that all in here, 6, 2, 1 times 8. And space, 5, 5, 2, 9, 2. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we can just put that whole thing in and, and solve it. Anyways, so now we can plug in our parametric equations of the line into the equation of the plane for the rectangle to, to get the point where they intersect. Now here I had copied and pasted. This is our equation of a line from earlier. All right, so that's our line. And now our P, our, our plane, is going to be this uh, 8x plus 2y plus 3z equals 5, 2, 9, 2. So let's plug those inside. So this is going to be 8. And then the x, so yes, 8, 2, 3. So 8. Plug in the 230 plus 630 T. So plug this inside. Yes, yeah, so let's plug that in. Yeah, let's put the arrow like that. Let's plug that in. The next one's going to be a 2. And yes, yeah, so a 2Y, 3Z. So 2, negative 2, 8, 5, plus 390 T. And then plus uh, 3. Is it, yeah, is it a plus? Yes, plus 3Z. 102 plus 162 t. This equals 2. Yeah, let's move this everything over. 5292. Let's make sure it fits into the box. All right, now we have all this. And what I'm going to do is, well, I'm not going to do manual calculations for these ones. These are a bit too uh, much. And we've done enough. So what I'll do is multiply everything inside and then do it by hand. No, I mean, uh, do it by a calculator. So eight times do the T's first, eight times 630. And I'm also, I'm also going to collect like terms as well. So I'll put a bracket right here. So eight times 630 plus two times 390. So two times 390. And then the next one's going to be three times 162. Three times 162, put a T. And I'm going to do now equals to 5292. And now I'm going to subtract because I'm going to move all this to the other side. So this is uh, 8 times 230, uh, yeah, 230. 8 times 230 plus 2 times, this is going to be uh, negative uh, 285. So I'll, I'll just put a negative there. So negative 2, yeah, so the negative 285. And then, uh, then plus 3, 102. Plus 3 times 102, put a bracket. All right, so if you plug this all into the calculator, you get this one's going to be 6306. Uh, six, and this all right here is going to be uh, 3. And then this is 716. Then solve for T. We get, well, let's put the completeness. We get a 63, 
zero six t equals two three seven one six. So that means t is going to be equal to, and this is going to be uh, three seven one six over six three zero six. You plug into the calculator, you're going to get a point zero, uh, and this is going to look like five nine around there. I'll just uh, block this out. Yeah, so that's our parameter t. All right, so now that we have that, let's do a calculation check. So we'll have this 8 times 630 plus 2 times 390 plus 3 times 162. And we get this uh, right here, space, 6306. And then lastly, or uh, next up is 5292 minus 8 times 230 minus 2 times 285 and then 3 times 102. Put that all in there, 3716. And then divide these out. This equals to that. And then we get this uh, three, and then also if you divide this by two, you can also factor it even further because they're both factors of two. Three, seven, one, six divided by two is one, eight, one, five, and this one is three, five, three, one, five, three. And then if you divide these out, you get the exact same thing. But anyways, so the next step is, uh, you can also do wolf Wolfram alpha. So you can just go solve for t, eight times 230 plus 630 t, plus two times negative 285 plus uh, 390 t, etc. Throw that in there and it automatically solves it. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> right, so automatically solves it. Uh, t equals 1858 uh, and then divided by 3153. So exactly this. All right, so epic, epic stuff. So plugging in the value of t inside the par parametric equations of the line, we get so 230, so x is 230 plus 630 times 185, uh, 8 divided by 313, we get the 601, etc. The next one is a negative 55.18. And the next one is for the Z 197.4634. And this point projects onto the screen at, and then we use the same equations. Yeah, same ones as before. So the X goes to the zero, it's on the, on the screen. And then the Y prime the, on the projection, we take this point and then divide it by one minus and then the X coordinate of it. Uh, this x coordinate divided by a thousand. So like that one minus x coordinate divided by a thousand, we get this number over here. So again, built in calculator. And then the same thing for the z, we take this number divided by one minus and then x divided by a thousand, we get this 49.205. Then graphing this out in, in GeoGebra as well as uh, using yeah, using the built-in uh, calculations, uh, the calculators are, uh, or calculation checks. So we could do an intersection check right here. So this is our intersection. Is going to be this point six zero one two four six etc. And the negative five five, and then one ninety seven point four six etc. So here's the point I put in manually. I, get, I put this one manually in. And now here, what you could do is you could do a rectangle plane. So that one we had, you could just use the intersect formula. So intersect, and then add the line L and the rectangle plane, and it automatically solves exactly this. This is exactly the same thing. Uh, with this one I rounded up uh, 197.5, this is 197.46. So epic, epic stuff. And then uh, here's the intersection projection is going to be just this point 0, negative 138, 495, etc. So we have that. And this projection line is from this point up to this point, I believe. Or yeah, something like that, yeah. But, but anyway, so this is how the, the stuff looks like. So there's the intersection point right here. There it is on the screen. And now we have to find this point to get rid of this line behind it so that it gives the uh, illusion of 3D or the perspective of 3D. And uh, here let's go back to the GeoGebra. So let's see what we let's see what we have sideline checking. That's this one. And what I'm going to do is let's find the uh, point. So intersection check. So this is intersection like that. So there's the intersection on it. Let's see if we can uh, get this uh, look nicer going through it. All right, I'll just move things around. Yeah, there it is. All right, so there's the line through it. There's intersection point, and let's see the projection. Intersection projection is somewhere there. All right, and now the only thing we need to do is actually we need to do a check intersection sight line checking. So what I'll do here is uh, we'll go yeah from the camera up to intersection projection. So we could copy this and then uh, block out this one just to make sure it goes through it. Intersection projection. Let's see if it shows. Yeah, so there it is. So this is from this point and I have it graphed out all, all the way to this point. And as you can see, it, it goes straight through the rectangle uh, point.
So the point of intersection of the rectangle, even though we're not graphing it from the, we're graphing from here to here and it cuts through. So that's a good double check of our work. Epic, epic stuff. Let's move this like this. And now the next uh, section of this book or of this uh, problem. All right. And now let's find the point of intersection of the projected line and the projected rectangle. So that's this point right there. So basically this part right here. Yeah, so like uh, right there where it crosses and this is the bottom part of the rectangle and there's the line it crosses somewhere here. So we've got to find that point and then we're going to remove that whole section from it. So from the above image, the projected line intersects the bottom right portion of the projected rectangle. So this is the bottom right there. I'm just going to call that bottom right. So uh, recall the vector equation of the projected line we calculated earlier. So that's this equation right here. This is the projected line PL like that. And this was our uh, the vector equals to the uh, yeah, this vector zero negative 71.43 600 and then plus t times zero negative 328 point five seven uh, and then uh, and minus fifth five one four point two nine and uh, that is the parallel vector we could scroll all the way up to find that let's just keep going and uh, here yeah I just teleported right here so this is from uh, the uh, I think that was question three and actually it was a uh, question two two when we projected it on using these uh, projection uh, 3d to 2d uh, equations and we got this part right here so uh, zero, uh, negative 71.43, etc. And this is for the value of t is from zero to one, just basically going from a uh, uh, starting point to the end point. And we get it up yeah, starting from here and there. So that's the equation of the projected line. All right, and now that we have the, that line, uh, and now recall the coordinates of the projected rectangle, and I'll call this R1. This is equal to uh, zero, then negative three, eight, seven point eight six, etc. Five, four, three. And there's the R2, R3, R4. I'll, I'll show you what they mean. Basically, R1, I call it the top one, is R2, and then this is R3, and this is going to be uh, R4. And uh, we can see this if we go to the uh, calculator right here. So there is the uh, R1. So there's the dot. If you click this, whoops, uh, move this around. So there's the projected rectangle. Click this shape. I don't know what's it behind. Oops. Let's undo. Yeah, so if you click that and it highlights oh, where we're at, so that's R1. Then if you click this one, it highlights R2 and so on. And you can just you could just hide it. So R3 is here, and this is zero, negative three, two, three point six two, and then two fifty point seven three. And there is R4, that's zero uh one six seven uh zero point zero eight, and then three oh four point two four. So that's this bottom one there. You gotta go through to see it. Okay, there it is. All right, so that is the bottom. So we just need to look at the here. So we need to get an equation of a line from the bottom. We'll call this R3, and then there's the R4. So we gotta get this line segment equation there. All right, so let's get back to here. So let's calculate the vector equation of the bottom right portion of the projected uh, rectangle. All right, so to do this, uh, to calculate it, let's do this. I'm gonna go, let's just draw it out for completeness. This is there, it's gonna look something like this. Um, this is going to be our R3, this is our R4, so that's all we need. And then this one, uh, let's let's say we had, so let's say the origin is somewhere there, and it's going to be, just through it, dot, it's going to go across here. This is going to be R0, uh, and let's say that's R0, and this is going to R1. And yeah, and then uh, basically the line is going to be the, the vector pointing anywhere on the line. Let's call that R. And now instead of using uh, T, we'll call it S. We'll use an S for it. So R vector equals to R naught. And then this is going to be plus S times it by, yeah, times it by V. So the, uh, yeah, remember the uh, V vector is a parallel vector. That's just going to be parallel to uh, here and here. So that's the V and the V is just going to be equal to R naught plus S times it by uh, V is just going to be subtract two vectors R1 minus R naught. Yeah, just get a difference vector. So this equals two. Let's put this all together. This is uh, the R naught vector is going to be just the R3. So zero, zero, negative three, two, three. And then, uh, yeah, 0. 0.62. I mean, yeah, 0. 0.62. 
And then the, uh, the next one is 250.73. Like that. And uh, here, actually, I just uh, erased it. There's pause video and erasing. Just typed it out to save time. So actually, yeah, let's type this out uh, to save time. So R vector right here is going to equal to the R naught. The R naught just going to be the R3. So that's just a 0, negative 3, 2, 3.62, et cetera, 250. And then plus, then we're going to subtract these. So S times, so we're going to go 0, minus 0, then 167.08. So this one minus this, and this minus this. And this one, you can have a built-in calculator here. My one note, press, press space, equals to 40.84, I mean, 490.7. Yeah, so that is a calculation that's been checked. And then this one here, we can go uh, equals, and then 53.51. And that's exactly what we have here. So there is our vector equation of the bottom right part of this uh, uh, rectangle or projected like rectangle. And uh, yeah, it's projected rectangle. That's why the, the shape is not actually <laughs> rectangle. Yeah, the shape is actually going backwards like that uh, because it's projected on there. So it has to look like it's in 3D. All right. And uh, yeah, just for completeness, let's make this uh, look like how it looks like here. Uh, how it, yeah, it's bent on the other side. So it's just bended like that. So it looks something like that. All right, just fix that up. All right, now let's continue further. So if the lines intersect, then we should be able to obtain values of the parameters T and S such that the coordinates equal for each line. So basically, these need to be equal. So the uh, Y components, if you write in parametric form, this is 40.97 times S, and then uh, this minus 323.67. Uh, this, that equation needs to equal to this, negative 71.43, and this part right there. Yeah, multiplied by t. All right, and uh, what I've done here is, that, yeah, just typed it out just because there's a whole bunch of uh, numbers to, to a handwrite that would be very tedious and long. So basically, so the x coordinates for both of these are equal to zero. So x equals zero, x equals zero. And there's a zero t and zero s right there. Now the y, we need to set these equal. So negative 71.43, uh, that's from the line. Uh, and then, then we're going to have to do subtract minus t uh, times uh, 328.57. So minus 328.57 has to equal to the uh, uh, the coordinate on the uh, rectangle line. So negative 323 right here plus 490.7 times s. So that's one. We have to equate it. Now we can simplify this further by moving this. Yeah, so we can move this over to this side. So we're going to have a negative 71.43 and then plus 323.67. And if you put, put in the calculator here, this equals to 252.19. So that's what this equals to. All right. And then what we could do is divide everything out by 490.7. Yeah, so we could uh, start dividing this all out. And when you divide it, uh, you're going to yeah, divide this out. This equals to uh, 0.5139. That's this right here. And then this one, let's erase this. And then this one right here equals 0.6696. That's this right here. So that's equation one. We'll call that equation one. Then we can do the same thing for the Z. So we'll have two equations and then we can cancel out the uh, S uh, and so on. So the second equation is we're going to have 600. That's the line right here. So 600 for the Z and then minus 514.29 for the T. I mean, it times it by T. So that's this right here, 600 minus 514.29t has to equal to the right side uh, of this, uh, this is going to equal to the rectangle. So 250.73 plus s times 53.51. All right, and then uh, basically doing the same thing. So we're going to take this uh, negative, I mean, this 250, move it over to this side. So I'll have 600 minus uh, 250.73, and then plug in this the calculator. This equals to 349.27. So that's this right here. And then we're just gonna, uh, then we're just gonna, going to divide everything out by 53.57 to just get S by itself, just like this one. So do that and then uh, yeah, divide this out. This equals to uh, 6.5272. And that's this right here. And then uh, last one here, uh, this one here divided out by 53.51. I mean, let's put in the calculator. And then put it like this equals yeah nine point six one one etc. That it just uh, rounded up to one one. It's interesting. I have, let's put a one as well. Let's do that again. All right. So we have a, yeah an extra one there. Interesting. All right. 
All right, and uh, basically call that equation uh, two. So this is equation two, and just make it look like it's not actually, uh, yeah, it's not a subtracting from equation two. This is a arrow. So that's going to be equation one. That's equation two. So subtracting equation two from equation one, we thus uh, we can thus solve for t. Basically, when we when we subtract this from this, we cancel out the s's. So we do that directly. So this uh, 0 0.5139 minus 6.5272 uh, equals, this part is a negative uh, 6.0133, so that's that one. And then likewise, this uh, point, uh, this negative 0 0.6696, that is uh, right over here. Yeah, negative that, uh, and then we're gonna subtract, yeah, we're gonna subtract the negative number 9.611, so that becomes positive, and then uh, put this in the calculator, this equals to, uh, eight eight point nine four one five actually yeah, because I had these calculated with the just two ones now this now it's an extra one. All right, whoops. So that's one five and uh, yeah, just, just actually yeah, let's erase this now. Yeah, so that's what we have. So this becomes this t equals zero and then you can move this over and then move this over to this side and then divide it out by this to get to solve for t. So t equals two. Uh, this can be positive. Divided by this, uh, 6.0133 divided by 8.9414. It's actually going to be, yeah, it's actually, yeah, that's it. Well, actually, no, it's not 1.4. This is 1.5. Yeah, I have to update everything. Because uh, that extra 1 that I ignored earlier. All right. All right, yeah, but it's still the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 6. Point, yeah, point six. Uh, 725. So that is what t is equal to. So plugging this value of t into our earlier equation or equation one, uh, into uh, either equation. Yeah, so I put that in. So into either equation one or two and solving for s we get. So, uh, we have it over here. So s is equal to, and, uh, this is equation one. That's uh, this right here. So s equals to 0.15139 and minus 0.6696. And then just put that in times it by t, which is here, because remember we have a t there. So, and then uh, this equals two, and uh, so equals to, yeah, point zero six three six like that, so epic so. So plugging these values, we have t and s, into the two equations of the projected lines, we get, uh, and then we can get the coordinates. All right, so the projected line, the x coordinate is, uh, is zero, then the y is gonna be, number the line is gonna be negative 71.43, and then minus 328.57 times t, so plug in t. Uh, for that again, let's just go look at the equation of the line earlier. So there it is, negative 71.43 plus t, and then you have these th negative 328.57, et cetera. And that is right here, negative uh, 328.57 times this byte. And we get this number here. And uh, yeah, so we get, uh, yeah, these are the coordinates. Let's put a, delete this. All right, and this is negative 292.3933, and uh, likewise for the z, you get 600 minus 514.29 times it by t. This equals two, yeah, 254.14. And then you do that the same for the bottom right uh, line of the rectangle. So then uh, we'll call that x prime is gonna be zero, x, and then y prime equals negative 323.62 plus 490.7 times by s. Put this in the calculator. This equals uh, negative 292.4115. This one is a 0.393, but it's, it's pretty close because we have to round up on all, a lot of these. So because of the rounding and each, each time you round it, you're gonna have a slightly different answer there. So, yeah, because we didn't use exact numbers. And again, this is the y prime, and that is just uh, this part right here. This is the line of the bottom right line. So negative 323.62, and then there's plus s, 490.7. Just went to, uh, yeah, 490.7. And then, uh, lastly for the Z projected, uh, on, yeah, I mean, yeah, the projected bottom right line of the rectangle, I'll put in the value for S inside. So we get this number 254.133. All right. And, uh, this one is pretty close to this one. Again, uh, there was some rounding errors, but it's, uh, yes, identical, almost, almost identical. But then you could do a calculation check with Wolfram Alpha and you can literally just type in solve for two values, two variables now instead of just one. So solve for S and T, so negative 71.43 uh, minus 328.57, T equals to negative 323.62 uh, plus 490.7 S, and that is uh, this first equation set up here, 490.S, so that, that one, you can plug that one and end this one, 600 minus 514.29, so 600 uh, 
at minus 514.29t equals 250.73 plus 53.51s. So plug all that in and it automatically solves it for you. Unbelievable. So S is uh, approximately equal to 0 0.06363. Um, and then uh, the, this one has more decimal places. So R is stopped at uh, this one, 0 0.0636. But then there's another um, another three there for it. And then the T is uh, approximately equal to 0 0.67251. And R's, uh, this calculator built in one note just stops at 0.625. All right, so yes, <laughs> it's a pretty epic Wolfram Alpha. Uh, has more de uh, precision uh, decimal places, and it does it automatically. And you could use human uh, language like solve for s and t, and <laughs> and you could use a number, uh, just the word and, and does it all for you. All right, so we have all that, and it's pretty epic. So now graphing it all out in GeoGebra 3D graphing calculator, we get so graphing this out in GeoGebra and hiding the line segment projected behind the screen, we have our final projected image. All right, uh, so what we have here, if we scroll down, uh, we have uh, this part right here. Here's the rectangle bottom right line, and you could just literally just type projection R3. So those are the R3 that we had, and R4, and we get our equation of a line. So it's again built in calculator. So we have uh, the R naught is going to be 0, negative 323.62, and the 250.73. And they use lambda, but uh, we just used S. And this is uh, 0, 490.7, and then 53.51. That's exactly what we had, uh, and you can see that uh, here. So uh, it's going to be 490, and then uh, 490.7, and then there's 53.1, and then this is the R naught values of 0, negative uh, 323.62, 250.73. So yeah, 0, and then there's a 323.62, and there's the, uh, the uh, 250.73. Yeah, 250 yeah, so it automatically solves it for us, and that is right. So we got the right line. And then uh, what we could do is intersection projection uh, projected lines check. Yeah, so we could just uh, plug this in. Instead of uh, putting our values, we'll just go intersect the bottom right line and our projected line that we had earlier. It automatically solves it, and it uh, gives it as 0, uh, negative 292.4, and 24.13. So number the negative 292. Uh, yeah, so there's a negative 292.4, then 254.13. Yeah, 0.4 and 1.3, so exactly. <laughs> so you get this exactly right. Epic stuff here. So what we could do then is in projected line screen, we could do a segment from the projected uh, line 2. I mean, uh, yeah, I think it's over from here. So never mind, that's projected 1. It's, we can do a line segment from here at the bottom up to here. So we can go from here up to this intersection there. So we can go projected projection two and up to intersection projected lines check. That's this one right here. So I just use those long ones. And then uh, so we do that and then we can hide. And so we'll do a line from there and get rid of the line behind it so we can remove this whole section. And I have a 3D shape which will look quite amazing. And there is our 3D shape there. So there is the shape going through and projected on there. And we have a 3D image. Absolutely amazing stuff here. And let's go back to our calculator and see this all. So let's uh, click it here, projected line behind the screen. So that's behind the screen. Projected lines check, that's over there. And there's the uh, rectangle. Let's click this thing so we can hide it. So let's hide the whole line. So that's the line, projected line. Let's get rid of it. All right, so we got rid of that. And now what we need is, yeah, intersection lines check. Uh, we'll put this here. There's a bottom right line here. So this bottom right line going through the rectangle there. And now what we need is projected lines. Yeah, there's a top. So there's our 3D uh, image there. And we, if you get rid of these uh, dots, uh, you can see our line. So there it goes through the rectangle, and there is a 3D image going through that. <laughs> Absolutely amazing stuff there. So yes, there's our 3D uh, uh, perspective on a 2D screen from the camera. So epic, epic stuff. And that is uh, all for today. Hopefully you learned. And again, uh, the link to these... Um, uh, yeah, the calculator, you can go play around with it and you can edit and save it yourself for your own uh, viewing pleasure. And uh, yeah, that is all for today. But uh, and hopefully you enjoyed it. And this is pretty much how, um, yeah, this is pretty much how the, a lot of the math that goes behind uh, the cameras and how they uh, clip and uh, cl yeah, clip the image yeah, according to the clipping plane so that the perspective, the 3D perspective is, is contained in the screen. So yes, epic stuff here. All right. And let's just continue. Yes, yeah, this, this is how, uh, yeah, behind the computer and behind cameras and stuff like that. I, that's how the, uh, the math works. And hopefully you'll learn. It's a pretty extensive, uh, discovery project. And that's why it's called discovery project. Usually it's a, a it's more intense, uh, 
mathematics, but also uh, has a lot of applications in real life. Anyways, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and like always, you can uh, see the uh, these exact video notes in the link in the description below in PDF format and in article format on the Hive blockchain. You can see the links and also the, the sections playlist. I'll, I'll break it down into smaller uh, clips uh, as well as a full long video, whichever one you like, and put it all in a playlist. Anyways, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.